Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, Master of Dungeons Presents the Keys from the Golden Vault. This is our first session tonight. Uh, thank you if you've come back from watching our uh, session zero uh, last Sunday, where we uh, started creating our characters. Uh, we're going to get to them uh, here shortly. Um, but uh, just for everyone, we do we are using Roll20 as our VTT. Uh, we are using Adventurers League rules. Uh, if you uh, want to know about the Adventurers League, you can go to uh, the Wizard of the Coast website for D&D. explains that. Or if you join our community Discord, uh, which pops up every once in a while here in the uh, Twitch chat, you can uh, join uh, join us in Discord, and you can uh, look into, uh, click on AL as one of your roles. We'll have a bunch of uh, Adventures League uh, information for you in there, all the documentation. Basically, what the Adventures League rules are is that it's just the rules as written. Uh, there's only a few different variants that, uh, that you'll find in the Player's Handbook or the Dungeon Master's Guide, or the Monster Manual for that matter. Uh, that are allowed for Adventurers League, uh, but it does explain all of those. It's just kind of like a, every DM has their their house rules, uh, and just happens to be that in the Adventurers League, everyone plays with the house rules of the Adventurers League rules. Uh, as I mentioned, we are using Roll20 for our VTT. We're also going to be explaining and teaching stuff about, for those of you that might be new with Roll20 uh, Virtual Tabletop, uh, we're also going to be explaining stuff uh, that uh, if you're a new player uh, or Dungeon Master to Dungeons & Dragons, uh, as we go through the different turns, uh, making ability score checks, uh, skill checks, things along uh, that those lines when we're playing tonight. Uh, a little bit also, uh, what I also like to do is I have uh, some safety tools that we uh, have available for the players. Um, we do have in the bottom right-hand corner of our Rule 20 interface, there's a deck of cards. The players that are playing tonight click the choose uh, button, and those are the standard NOX cards, which are explained uh, in our safety tools cards handout. Uh, they're basically stop, go, or pause. If anything in the game uh, makes you feel unsafe or something of that nature, you can use those uh, safety tools uh, to like pause the game uh, or stop the situation and, and uh, things like that. Uh, I also have my own invention, which is called a safety shield. Uh, it is a token, it's a character token that the uh, players can pull out. Uh, it also has token actions on there. Uh, fast forward in case something's a little uh, uncomfortable, we can fast forward to that scene. Um, sometimes I get a little bit descriptive. Again, we're going to try to be PG, PG-13, uh, but if I get a little too descriptive, the players can always uh, click level down on the descriptions and then uh, good to go if we've had to pause for something and uh, someone needed a bit of time uh, to uh, you know, kind of collect themselves, uh, they can click that button. With those token actions on the safety shield, all of those whisper directly to the dungeon master. They whisper only to me. No one else will see those. So if you have to use that, uh, that's not a problem. Everyone should be able to open that in your uh, safety tools folder, in your journal, in Rule 20. Now, we've discussed previously, and the gentlemen are okay with me going ahead and taking the safety deck uh, off of the main screen. Uh, so we can go ahead and clear up the uh, uh, the Rule 20 view. Uh, for those watching here on Twitch. So uh, let's go ahead first and uh, go ahead and uh, we'll start with Stinkfoot and we'll move down the line uh, at the bottom of your screens there. There's Stink and there's uh, Snaps and then there's Reggie. So Stinkfoot, go ahead, Stink, and give us a little bit about your character. Uh, if you want to share any of your backstory, that's fine, uh, but make sure to get your mechanics in there uh, at the end of your race and class uh, level and uh, of course level one tonight and uh, any pronouns you have for your character. Go ahead. Greetings. Um, I'm playing Stinkfoot, Alabaster Grasper. Uh, my name's Dan, or Design Lizard. Um, I am playing a Sferfneblin wizard with the urchin background. Um, I think that's about it. Um, well, the the backstories are going to cross with a couple of the other characters, which was just um, oddly the roll of the dice during session zero character creation. Um, me and the others for Neblin ended up with a lot of similar backstory roles, so um, our, our upbringing was somewhat intertwined. And I would say I'm a wizard because my great uncle, Stinkfoot, um, graduated at the top of his class with some of the best, best adventurers he's ever played with um, going through Strixhaven last year. So. Um, he wants to follow in the, the family footsteps, leave the gross dark under dark. Um, people usually look at him a little funny, but if there's two of us, maybe we'll be a little more accepted out in the world and um, ready to adventure. 
All right, thank you, Stinkfoot. And then we have Snaps. Hello, yes. Um, I will be playing Gimble Snaps McCracken, uh, which is also in Deep Gnome. Uh, it'll have a gray complexion. I grew up in the uh, under underdark or underground, you know, it's where Deep Gnomes are from. And uh, coming here to the surface world, uh, fortunately, I have, like uh, Dan was saying, that I have someone who is able to uh, match my bearing and looks because some you know maybe people haven't seen too many deep gnomes but uh yes i am actually indeed a rogue playing a rogue and uh as far as my background um i had quite the tragic background apparently uh as far as going through the character creation i uh, have a lot of different life events that have been uh you know i've lost loves and i've got a child and i've had tragedies and I, i've um went on an adventure and I got a d disease that turned my chin hair white. And, uh, I have had all of these crazy things happen to me. Uh, and, uh, including I fought in a battle, which is, uh, quite uh, pivotal in my, yep. say again. So yeah. which we'll talk about here probably a little bit. Yeah. yeah so, uh, that's, uh, something that's, uh, might uh, come up here soon. So yeah, that's, uh, I'm, uh, going to be playing snaps, the deep gnome rogue. All right, thank you, Snaps. And then we have Reginald. Hey, folks. I'm Otter. I will be playing the Herengon Ranger by the name of Reginald. They're a bit comical looking, if you will. Stuffed into their leather armor, they are more poof than form, except for where the armor lays. Uh, some notches up their ear. kind of larger cloak obfuscating some of their form. They have a bit of a unfortunate background. They have spent a, the last good chunk of time in prison for a crime they didn't commit. And due to some interesting folks they met inside, an opportunity presented themselves to possibly get out. And we now find them on the run, if you will. All right. Thank you very much, Reginald. And of course, I am the Master of Dungeons. I'm our DM for tonight. A little bit about my play style. I am a storytelling DM. I view the game as a collaborative game in which the characters are the heroes, and we're get to, getting to tell their story of their heroic adventures together. Uh, with that being said, everyone go ahead and begin with inspiration. Uh, keep in mind that I do use inspiration a lot. Uh, if you do inspiring things, uh, especially for your companions, uh, it might get everyone uh, some, uh, some inspiration back. And we are playing, uh, again, the Keys from the Golden Vault. In the book, it says you can set them pretty much in any setting you want for the Forgotten Realms, or for the Adventurers League, I should say. We're playing in the Forgotten Realms. Uh, many of the place names in the uh, different adventures are going to kind of be shifted over to the uh, massive City of Splendor's Waterdeep, as we are going to base uh, our game, uh, the Keys from the Golden Vault, uh, in Waterdeep. So, is everyone ready to play? I'm ready. All right. So each one of you have been drafted into uh, become members of the uh, secretive organization known as the Golden Vault. Uh, the Golden Vault is a group fairly secret, uh, rumored to be associated with metallic dragons. Uh, but the Golden Vault is an organization based uh, in the outer planes, most most likely somewhere like Arborea or something of that nature. Uh, its membership and activities are almost impossible for outsiders to track, but those in the know are aware that the organization's uh, the organization itself rights moral wrongs, supports virtuous underdogs, and handles delicate situations that local authorities most likely won't touch. The Golden Vault's motto reflects its primary motivation: do good, no matter the cost. Missions from the Golden Vault are often illegal but they always support a just or moral cause. Um, this day, you're sitting at the uh, tavern in uh, Trollskull Alley in Waterdeep. 
uh, waiting for uh, to meet your handler, uh, one Mira Rahir. And uh, while waiting, uh, kind of reflecting on how you joined, uh, how you were per- approached uh, by members and the uh, some handle different uh, people from the Golden Vault, uh, reflecting on how you uh, joined. Uh, so Stinkfoot, why don't you go ahead and give us uh, just a small snippet of how the uh, Golden Vault would have approached you, or what I, what you did that was very heroic. Uh, that would have brought you into the into the, uh, the Golden Vault organization. Sure thing. Um, uh, small deed heroic type thing. Um, when I first came to Waterdeep, um, working odd jobs, I was a janitor at uh, Strixhaven. I was messenger, delivery boy. Um, I'd always stop um, down the homeless alley and uh, just feed people, visit with people. Even if I didn't have extra money, I'd just talk to them just to treat them like not really human but whatever they were treat them like people and um one of the regulars in that alley i found out later on was actually a rather wealthy artist um and very grateful for the time we spent together and the the little things i did here and there for their little group of um homeless band and in the end i can't tell you his name or he'll kill me but he is back on the up and up in the art world and he has actually enlisted the Golden Vault to recover several of his pieces um, that were lost during his homelessness and put in a good word about me while dealing with the vault. And um, one of the last times I was in town, they found me and approached me and asked me to meet here and now. All right, thank you. And Snaps, I believe you said something about fighting in a battle and uh, something on loose. Talk, uh, tell us about that. Yes, yes. Um, uh, throughout his adventures of coming to the surface world, uh, he ended up working with a military regiment uh, as sort of a scout, and he was learning how to, you know, maneuver through, you know, the different territories and things. And they saw his abilities, and uh, ended up fighting in a large battle. Uh, we like to call it the Battle of the Oyster Shoals, but it had a larger name. But this is what we were fighting in, and. Uh, there was a chance to uh, get some extra coin. There was some treasure over there, and Snaps, being you know trying to make his way and starting out in the world, thought, "Wow, I'm going to be able to get this treasure." But at the same time, in the battle, a uh, lieutenant that was in one of the regiments had uh, been assailed by a bunch of enemy. So I was able to sneak over there instead of going for the gold. I went to save the life of the lieutenant, and that. Uh, Kind of turned the tide of the battle in, in some ways, but that's kind of what, you know, they call it a heroic deed. Eh, I'm being, you know, I was like, well, I'm just trying to do my thing. Nice. All right. Thank you, Snaps. And then Reginald, uh, I believe you had an encounter when you were falsely imprisoned, correct? Tell us about that. I did. Um, I can't exactly reveal the name of the individual I met, but for now, we can refer to them by the moniker of G. They heard tale of my false imprisonment and empathized with me being there for something I hadn't committed. They offered to reach out to a guild that they were familiar with to give me an opportunity to escape the prison I was confined in. They wouldn't help me escape, but they would help line things up to create an opening. The rest would be up to me. It was not easy, but I did manage to make it out, and a few days later, a a messenger found me. And here I am. Excellent. All right. Thank you, Reginald. So you're sitting at the uh, Troll Skull in the Troll Skull audience tavern. And uh, after a few moments, uh, it's fairly early in the, uh, uh, just before midday, so not a whole bunch of patrons in the uh, small little establishment. Uh, And uh, it's been known, of course, that there's a a ghost that works in the tavern that uh, uh, helps out cleaning dishes and things of that nature. And you see a broom uh, just behind the uh, bar uh, sweeping on its own. And... uh, the bartender, uh, the tavern uh, owner, comes up and uh, sets everyone a round of drinks down. Uh, 
that you would have ordered also brings you your food. And a short time later, a uh, a smaller woman uh, walks into the room. I'll go ahead and show you her uh, picture. And says, ah, uh, please uh, follow me. I, I, I've i gotten us a, a private uh, room, uh, a private dining area for us to speak uh, about, you know, our, our business venture here in Waterdeep. And she kind of looks around a little nervously, but uh, motions for you all to uh, grab your drinks and your food and follow her to one of the private areas that she has uh, reserved. And as you follow her in there, she sits down and says, uh, uh, yes, uh, I, 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 I'm your handler. I am, I'm Mira Rahir. Um, uh, there are a few things that you will need as members of the Golden Vault. And as she's speaking, she's kind of walking around the room. She's got some sort of glowing wand in her hand, maybe looking perhaps for like, you know, listening you know, spells or anything, anything of that nature, uh, detecting magic most, most likely. And she says, uh, the first thing that you will need is uh, you will have to, uh, we'll have to give you uh, your music box. And after kind of being uh, uh, pretty sure that no one's listening in or nothing's uh, happening. She comes over and reaches down into her pack and she pulls out a, a beautiful looking uh, uh, golden music box. Uh, and she says, well, uh, whenever uh, the Golden Vault has a mission for you, um, wherever you may be, um, we will uh, somehow, I can't tell you all the workings, of course, but uh, we will get you a golden key. You'll take that key and insert it to the music box, and when it opens, it will give you your mission. Uh, keep in mind that uh, we are a secretive organization. Uh, do your best to and use your wiles to uh, remain as uh, unobserved as possible in all of your missions that you will be working uh, with the Golden Vault. Um, utmost importance that you keep the secret, it's secrecy. If by some chance you are caught, uh, the Golden Vault will do what we can to uh, help you with the situation um, and uh, uh, to try to uh, free you uh, from any captivity that might might arise. Now, I, I'm sure that you have many questions, uh, but I, at the moment, do not have a lot of time uh, to uh, speak as I do have some more uh, business matters to attend to. However, uh, Wait a few moments, about 10 minutes or so, and use this. And she sets down a golden key uh, right in front of you. She says, it's your first mission. Good luck. She gives each one of you a wink, and she turns and uh, exits the private dining room. Um... Would you like to wait for a few minutes and finish your meals, or does anyone reach for the key and immediately uh, try to uh, open the box? Uh, what would you like to do, each one of you? Well, I immediately I look around and she's laying the golden key there, and I have my box. I I take the key and I kind of just kind of hold it down so nobody's you know able to see it, mm -hmm. and I kind of like look at the other guys. I'm like, hey guys. Yeah, you know, there you where you're sitting. It's, it's like a, a small little a booth off of the uh, uh, main area of the uh, the tavern, and it does have a uh, the curtains, really thick curtains, uh, to draw closed uh, to uh, make the uh, area private. So, do you wait the allotted time, or do you open it early? What do, what do you wish to do? Shall we wait, guys? I'm playing this character. Open it. Smart. I would wait. <sighs> okay. Very if good. Very good. Wait. I've learned anything from previous experience with them. They're pretty peculiar about timings if they do give them to you. Well put. Ah, okay. Never mind. I'll Here wait. You. Yeah, I spend the next ten minutes. Go ahead and finishing your meal and uh, you know drinking some of the drinks that uh, the barkeep had. Uh, uh, given you when you first uh, came in, and then uh, ten minutes uh, passes. Who would like to uh, insert the key into the uh, music box? Perhaps maybe the wizard do it. I vote the rogue. <laughs> I, I'm handing it out to the wizard, but I'll take it and I open the box. All right. The lid pops open, and a soothing voice says the following. 
Greetings, operatives. The Golden Vault has learned that the key, I'm sorry, that the egg of an eldritch horror has been mistaken for a historical object. And it's about to go on display at the Waterdeep Museum of Natural History. The anthropologist, Dr. Casey Donnell, tried to warn officials about this egg, known as the Merkmeyer Stone, but none believed her. We do. And we know that if this egg hatches, many will die or worse. This quest, should you choose to undertake it, requires you to infiltrate the museum, steal the egg, and return it to Dr. Donnell, who will neutralize it. There is no time to waste. The egg could hatch at any moment. Start by meeting with Dr. Donnell. She will contact you. Good luck, operatives. And the music box closes and the golden key vanishes. Whoa. That's a cool trick. The key Let's, uh, just go. Head home and start packing. We better get out of town before this egg hatches. <laughs> that is one option if you want to just to flee it. <laughs> yeah, well, we're done. That's it. Later. He's out. That sounds uh, above my pay grade. Leave. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Um, well, uh, can I ask the so DM a me... quick question? Sure. Just from that description, they mm -hmm. they called it the egg of an eldritch horror, but they also called it something else that it was mistaken as. Yes, yeah, the Merkmeyer Stone. Okay. They believed they believed initially that it was a uh, uh, some sort of historical object that uh, archaeologists had dug up because uh, they were doing digs around ancient Waterdeep uh, sites and stuff around Waterdeep and discovered it. And uh, Dr. Cassie Donnell uh, knew that it was actually a uh, the egg of a uh, eldritch horror. And uh, they would not believe her. Uh, you might be able to get more information from her uh, about maybe why they didn't believe her. But you do know an idea of what your mission is now. Uh, so if there's anything you want to do, like traps go out and head out uh, to the different uh, areas, different bazaars in Waterdeep, pick up a few uh, magic or a few items. Uh, I should say, uh, of course, with it being eventually, you can also purchase uh, stuff from the player's handbook at this time. Uh, if you want to get like, keep in mind that you know, if you if you have enough money to pool together, you might be able to get a grappling hook, or if you don't already have one, or perhaps maybe uh, a healer's kit or anything of that nature. Perhaps maybe some more. Uh, uh, arrows or bolts? Um, I do have a few things I would like to get. Um, so, I do yeah, a little, little bit of time as we yeah, get through. Yeah, you starting money from your background. I think that uh, mm -hmm. uh, Snaps has a little bit extra coin than everyone because Snaps worked a lot of jobs, too, uh, in his uh, his long life. <laughs> quite a few, a quite a few. So, yeah, since we so are I... using Rule 20, uh, I do have my compendium shared for you. If you go to the top right there, you do have your uh, uh, your compendium. Uh, you can type in adventuring gear uh, and stuff like that. It should have uh, lists of that for you as well. Uh, if you happen to have your own D&D &D Beyond account, if you want to open that up in a separate uh, tab, you can do so and look through, uh, through the uh, player's handbook for items as well. I do have rope from my explorer's pack, but I don't mm -hmm. have them. And I have extra room. Well, before we head out, what kind of capabilities is everyone comfortable with? I'm light on my feet and pretty decent with a bow. Pretty good. I've got a bow. Mm, it's uh, hit or miss, <laughs> literally. And uh, but it as well, right? Uh, but I'm very stealthy, yes, uh, normally. And uh, I also have my rogue ability of a uh, sneak attack. Do a little bit of extra damage from behind. And uh, while they're not looking. A few of you took, uh, as your extra, your, your bonus feat at first level, I think some of you took Magic Initiate, right? Mm -hmm. Indeed, yes, I yeah. did. Which one I did believe all of us did. I think all of you did, yeah, yeah. No one took skill, no one took uh, tough or anything. It was interesting. So uh, what uh, what what uh, magic initiate path did you take with Stakefoot? I took spare the dying because oh, Eric. I took toll the dead, and I took cure wounds. 
Awesome, awesome. Especially since we don't have a, a healer yet until the ranger gets some healing magic. And what did you take with snaps? Uh, I took the uh, bardic abilities of Vicious Mockery and True Strike. Oh, nice. So what was your first level spell? Um, that one I haven't determined yet. I was going to ask you uh, if any were any recommendations for that one. I, uh, I'm not I really that familiar with the bardic spells. Now keep in mind with these abilities, once you do get spell slots later on, like, if, for example, you had mentioned maybe dual class into bard later on. Obviously, the ranger's going to gain spells. Uh, you can use spell slots of uh, that you have available to cast these spells as well as, as your, like, when you get your uh, deep gnome magic and such. Uh, but I would recommend, and other players feel free to chime in too, but a sleep is a great spell, especially at low level. Especially if you're going to be going into places where you're not supposed to be. <laughs> I looked at that one, but I... I, I if was, the goal so many is choices. not to murder, early on, sleep is a lovely spell. I'll have my sand pouch ready. A charm person might be uh, another one to look at as well. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, like Reg, what, did you, what did you, Reginald, what did you uh, pick for your magic initiate? I went with Cleric. Oh, you want the Cleric as well? Mm -hmm. The two cantrips I took, one is Guidance, because it is just infinitely helpful. <laughs> yeah. Secondly, I'm the only one without night vision, or dark vision, if you will, so I took light as well. Oh, cool. And then did and you take a... For my first level spell, I chose Healing Word. It is a slightly less potent healing spell, but it does come with the benefit of being able to do it at a range in emergencies. Excellent. So uh, heading out to pick up a few things. I mean, you can, uh, let's see, a uh, climber's kit might be a little bit out of your range uh, with 25 gold. Uh, the healer's uh, kits, I always recommend healer's kits for those of you new to D&D. &D. Uh, basically, when a character drops to zero hit points, what happens is, is that they have to start making death saving throws uh, in order to try to stabilize themselves. Uh, if another character comes over or an NPC comes over to the uh, person that's at zero hit points, they have to make a DC 10 medicine, a wisdom medicine check, or intelligence medicine. I'm, I'm sorry, I've run too many different editions. Uh, but it has to make a DC 10 medicine check. If they fail, uh, they do not stabilize the person. The healer's kit has 10 uses. It costs five gold and allows a player to immediately come over, not even have to make a medicine check, and expend the use to automatically stabilize a, a, a player that is at zero hit points. Hopefully that won't come up tonight, right? Yes. Hopefully not. <laughs> uh, grappling hooks are only two gold. Keep that in mind. Uh, you can also pick up different things like some of the different packs, uh, like your burglar's packs and things uh, of that nature. Uh, they are a little bit more expensive, um, but they do contain a lot of stuff. So if there's anything you want to pick up, you can pick up sacks for a copper. You maybe even want, get you a signal whistle. I want a whole lot of chalk. Sure. Like, mark oh. on the wall. We've yeah. been there. Little signs you can give good to idea. one another back and forth. Yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, I'm, I'm going to get a small bell. Okay. A lot of string. Mm. All right, so while you're out shopping, I'll let you go ahead and finish up uh, what you're uh, uh, buying and such, and you can put those into your uh, uh, on your character sheets. Make sure to keep track of those. That way, at the end of the adventure, when you fill out your Adventures League log, uh, you'll be able to put all of the information of what you purchased in there, as well as what you receive from the adventures. Uh, also, to let everyone know, these adventures are designed to be played in about four hours. Uh, since our stream's about three hours, we're basically going to be breaking each one of the adventures. Uh, I believe there's 13 of them or uh, 11 of them, sorry, uh, in the uh, the Keys from the Golden Ball uh, hardcover. Uh, we're going to be breaking each one of them down into two parts. So tonight we're going to run part one of this adventure, uh, the Merkmeyer Malevolence. And then next week we will play the conclusion, the second part of that adventure. So as you're out shopping... Um, your business this morning, you see a grave halfling messenger uh, comes up to you, finds you, and hands you a sealed note. And hands it to uh, hands it to Reginald. Wait. 
Well, I, I guess I'll see what's inside. Uh, you open it up, and it's uh, in, in, in a fairly delicate script that says, Meet me at the Sage's Quill today as soon as you can. I beg your help in a delicate matter whose importance cannot be overstated. I shall await you in a purple hooded robe. The note is signed Dr. Cassie Donnell. When you look up, the halfling messenger is gone. Is cool. Um, <laughs> I will inform. Yeah, um, I'll look over to the other two as they're shopping. We should probably find directions to the Sage's Quill. Uh, Everyone, go ahead and give me a history check, if you would. Uh, and uh, Stinkfoot, you can make yours at advantage, since uh, you've all been here in, in Waterdeep for a number of months, uh, having met one another, uh, had a little bit of a uh, history of your backstory, uh, trying to basically f wait until you were able to start working for the Golden Vault. Ooh, nice, two 19s, right off the bat. Uh, yes, you're fairly sure of where the uh, um, Sage's Quill is. It's uh, somewhere, it's towards the center of town. Uh, near a, 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 a an inn that's uh, very frequent uh, frequented by adventurers uh just a few blocks uh near the a uh, few blocks west of the yawning portal well there's uh, nothing i'm done I'm shopping sure. okay so fantastic got my got the things i need okay um, Anybody else needed to go any do anything before we should go to the quill? Do you have a crowbar? I do. You do? Okay. Hmm. Excellent. Anyone happen to pick up a grappling hook? Yeah, I think I will. They are only two no. gold. I All right, so I meant to. You, I'm getting one. You, you, you yeah. said the healer's kit was five? I go, yes. Okay. I will grab that as an emergency fund for everybody. I was going to say, not necessarily something that Stinkfoot would need, being that you have Spare the Dying. Obviously, you could just use that instead. Yeah. All right. So, uh, finishing up your uh, uh, purchases uh, in the bazaars, uh, you um, kind of make your way down uh, to uh, the. Uh, uh, Sage's Quill. You know, remember that it's a quiet, plush tavern that kind of caters to the city's academics and intellectuals, uh, located near the Museum of Natural History, uh, and less than a mile away from one of the uh, universities here in Waterdeep. And uh, as you enter the Sage's Quill, soft light reveals mahogany furniture, luxurious carpets, a few genteel patrons uh, murmur in the lounge. Uh, you soon notice a purple hooded figure tucked into a corner booth. Uh, recognizing uh, the uh, purple hood, you see what you assume to be Dr. Donnell uh, gesture for you, uh, quickly for you to sit. And you notice lines of worry etched into her uh, north of what seemed to be a cheerful face. And give me a moment and I will give you a, a handout of what Dr. Donnell looks like. There we go. A little disheveled. And uh, as you sit down, she says, oh, oh, thank you. Thank you all for coming quickly, she says. Uh, a few weeks ago, I, I attended a dig in the Murkmire that unearthed a furrowed uh, light green stone. Uh, I'll give you all the details, but the bottom line is that stone isn't a stone at all. It's the egg of an eldritch whore. Moreover, my research indicates that that... And she kind of flips through some papers that she has in front of her uh, and, and looks through a couple of lists and it's like, uh, Ouch, at midnight tonight. The, the trouble is, no one listened to me. The universities ignored me and I was, I was caught trying to steal the egg from the museum so I could contain it, but now I've been fired and the Merkmeyer St Stone uh, display at the museum opens tomorrow and the egg's about to hatch. We've got to steal the Merkmeyer Stone and bring it back so I can save the city. And she looks to you expecting questions. You say it's going to hatch. Um, yes. 
I'm not sure what this horror is, but it sounds horrible. Um, if it hatches, then what? Are we in danger? Uh, Will it hurt us? It would just go on a blood frenzy and just seeking food uh, and seeking flesh to eat. Okay. I'd like to insight check her. Sure. She's completely telling the truth with that natural one on your roll with a two for your total. <laughs> 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 Sounds good to me. Uh, but anyone who wants to insight check, if you give it an insight check, you can. I'll give it a go. I'll yeah, do it people, too. Uh, Snaps and Reginald, you can tell that she's her fear is genuine, and what she's told you is is, is what she would definitely believes to be the truth. Uh, she does mention that. Uh, I one of the reasons that I I was. Uh, let from the university is that m many of my studies do deal in the occult and m many of the, the the instructors there are a bit more pompous to say that uh, uh, it's not real science or magic it's pseudoscience uh, but I'm telling you that this egg does indeed the this, this stone is actually an egg that does contain an eldritch horror and when it hatches it will be hungry and the more it eats the larger it will uh, become these such creatures have destroyed whole villages in the past. Ike would be very afraid of what it would do in a city the size of Waterdeep. And you said you tried to steal it already. Yes, but I will not be able to uh, go with you. Can you give us any insight on the layout of the building? Any information I, that may be helpful to us? I kind of, I kind of can, yes. Yeah. See, uh, what's what we need to do is get the egg first. I will let you know that it cannot be damaged or destroyed. Uh, and what happened is when it was unearthed, the egg triggered a rapid development of the creature within, which will soon, of course, be ready to hatch. I do have this, and she pulls out this crystal container, uh, and you can see there's a few cracks that needs to be sealed and such like that. Uh, so she's going to be fixing it uh, so that when you would re retrieve the egg, she can encase it in this crystal and prevent it from hatching. She says, I do have a very rough sketch of the museum. She kind of looks through her uh, uh, all the papers that she has in front of her that she was holding in her arms and such, and does indeed hand you a uh, Hand-drawn sketch Ooh, to the museum. Okay, great. Well, this is going to be helpful. This is uh, in case you very can, helpful. If you want, with uh, Rule 20, if you click on that where you see the little the little uh, spy, or the magnifying glass pop up, it'll bring it up to full size for you on your screen. Uh, oh. And if you can't read the writing there, you can also scroll down in the handout, and it gives you uh, what was written down there and such. Fantastic. Now, now, I must say that the uh, it's supposed to go on uh, view tomorrow to the public. Of course, we know that's not going to happen if it hatches. Uh, however, uh, there is tonight a gala, private gala, celebrating the new ex exhibition. And that is tonight on the museum's second floor in the Gemstone Wing. Gemstone Wing. Yes, I... Well, uh, that is uh, fortunate that you would ask. Uh, I have secured a gala ticket for each one of you. And she reaches over oh. into her pack and she, she passes over these tickets. And in, in case, and she reaches down to the same bag and she starts to kind of looks around, makes sure that no one sees you guys in the corner booth there. And she starts to pull out these beautifully fine formal wear that nobles uh, would wear to such events. And she pulls out a set for each one of you, and she kind of looks at you. And this bag is no bigger than, like, maybe a pouch of some sort. Maybe a little bit of a small bag. And uh, she, and these items are way too large to be in such a small bag. And uh, she uh, hands out, and she looks at each one of you for a moment. It's like, oh, this color would fit you fine. And she pulls out a, uh, a set of noble, noble clothing, uh, fine, fine clothing for each one of you to wear at the gala if you wish to attend. <laughs> oh, one thing, however, I will let you know. Um, 
if you do wish to attend the gala, you do not have to, of course, if you want to, to get uh, all of your uh, scouting and uh, any of your reconnaissance done on your own, uh, that is fine. I'm just giving this option to you. Uh, but if you do go to the gala, uh, you won't be able to uh, have your adventuring gear or your armor or weapons out, unfortunately. But you can borrow this. And she actually reaches down to that bag on her hip and sets it up on the table. I will lend you the bag uh, to store your adventuring gear, uh, which, of course, you'll need while sneaking about the museum and uh, doing your scouting during the gala. Uh, it's only from six to eight this evening, six bells to eight bells this evening. So you'll have about two hours in which you can go through and reconnaissance uh, the museum. Uh, I'm sure that there's magical alarms and things of that nature. So be mindful of those uh, when you're traveling, perhaps uh, traveling through the museum, perhaps look for spots where those might be placed once the museum's closed. Okay. Um, Notice on this map, so we have an attic window access to roof. Where does that line up with the second floor on this map? She's, she's on the tour. She's yeah, that's why she has question marks on them. Ah, that's what those mean. I mean, I'm neither an architect nor a burglar. It's just the map that I gave you is just based on the public map of the museum's exhibits. So it's it definitely isn't complete. No, I'm sorry for that. It does lack a bit of information about the museum's security measures. Uh, like, I, I know that it's outfitted with alarms after the closes to the public, but I, I don't know where those are or where they would be located or how to bypass them. Just have to be attention when we go there. Um, what do you say, guys? Should we do our own thing? Uh, I'm all about uh, playing dress up and trying to, you know, look around. It seems like it might be an easier way to get around and look at things, but I'm all for, you know, just kind of going in and sneaking ourselves. What do you think? I can't. I mean, we got this fancy bowl, fancy bag. It looks what, what we can put everything in here. I think she does say this. She goes, I, I can tell you that the museum does have 12 guards, and that the museum curator, an elf uh, named Alda Arkin, uh, likely has a record of these areas that the guards patrol at night. Uh, if on their person or in their office, I would not know. I would suspect that this information is in Arkin off Arkin's office. I believe it's located somewhere in the eastern wing on the first floor. Okay. Yes, if, if you're able to uh, bring back the Merkmeyer Stone, I, I will gladly allow you to keep uh, the bag. And I, I can also give you about 20 gold per person. Ooh, now you're talking. All right. Uh -huh. Do we know yeah. around when today, this evening, that this egg may hatch? Uh, she had mentioned that it, uh, it, could, it was supposed to will probably most likely hatch at midnight. But signs of it hatching would probably happen before. And the gala is six to eight. Yes, mm. the gala is six bells to eight bells in the evening. So we could we possibly go... use the gala for information gathering. Mm -hmm. use exactly that what I was going to suggest. Stake out the place. Yeah. Possibly, if some one of us happens to make their way into the curator's office, so be it. But it would give us a free opportunity to kind of snoop around at least the second floor. And if you want, you can even look around the outside. You know, the public is allowed, it's allowed around the outside of the Natural History Museum. Mm -hmm. A museum of natural history. So you can even look around the outside. You can examine if you want to try to look at, see, if maybe from a nearby building, perhaps, is there an attic window? Is there a way to get in that way? What time of day is it roughly now? Uh, right now, it was about mid-morning when you had met with uh, uh, Mira. Uh, from doing your shopping, uh, it's a little after uh, lunchtime here, so you probably have a good couple of hours um, before uh, the gala would be uh, starting. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's... Yeah, let's do a little recon. Look around. Look. 
uh, okay before we do that but uh i like the idea of going to the gala and actually you know participating and just walking around with permission so sure. that way you can make we can you know look at things and see what's going on and then after the gala of course we unless it depends on how we're escorted out uh perhaps we can hide inside of the museum somewhere and wait till a little bit later i noticed privy's right behind the gemstone display so oh someone's okay having a stomach okay. Maybe yeah. Yeah, but yeah, looking there, you do know that there's some sort of basement uh, that was mentioned there. Uh, there's loading docks that might have a back entrance, which you can easily walk around uh, the outside to, to check out if you want. Um, she does believe, again, from the handout, that there's an attic window that might have access to the roof, perhaps, maybe. She's not sure. Uh, and she does mention, that if you notice, on the second floor of, the, uh, of her uh, sketched map, uh, that there is the gemstone wing. Uh, there's creatures of the past, some prehistoric predator uh, displays, uh, some archaeological displays, and underground wonders on the second floor. Uh, there's ancient plants and ancient culture uh, cultures uh, displays on the first floor. Of course, there's the grand entrance, uh, a couple of statues, and a couple of shops uh, there on the first floor as well. And then she thinks that some of the offices are on the eastern side of the first floor. And I'm just going to pop this map up onto the overlay for real quick so the folks Ooh. on the stream can see what we're looking at. Oh, yeah. Um, as far as reconnaissance goes, discretion is, of course, our top priority. Shall we divide and conquer on pre-gala information gathering one of us look into the outside of the building one of us I'll see let, if there is a roof I'll, let side. The, uh, I'll let the viewers know right here as uh, otter is uh discussing this is actually a very good time to split the party normally you do not want to split the party when you're playing does the dragons no. actually during the day in, in Waterdeep, in a nice area where you know there's probably lots of uh, city watch and stuff around uh, this is not a bad time to maybe split the party, but of course we're going to let the uh, uh, the PCs decide what they want to do. The players decide. I'm just here for chaos. Let's split the party day <laughs> one and see what happens. Let's go. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So uh, perhaps we could all stay together uh, for now and do a recon, but when, then when it's time to go and do the the gala, we can go in when we go inside then we could split up and then agree to meet back at a certain point uh in say you know 30 minutes or 45 minutes of just uh wandering around and looking at things and trying to find out something I then we could and I uh, probably stick together I we think. should probably stick together anyway because then we would look when wandering around a hoity-toity would be alarming to see two separate wandering around it would be wicked suspicious i think we should uh Good point. idea. Good point. Yes. Um, okay. So yeah, we say to that. Reginald so, can hop around and do his thing, and we can just bumble around and pretend that we're, uh, uh, you know, gym merchants from, uh, you know, from old of uh, older family or something. You know, just see how it goes. You know, we're very interested in the displays here that. We've uh, uh, thinking about. We know someone that may be thinking about making a donation or something. If if it comes up, would would one of us be uh, well to maybe accidentally try to set off as many alarms as possible? Play well, the, the alarms. The alarms won't be go. Won't be a lot uh, set during the gala. There might be some, perhaps, but the majority of them, uh, from what uh, Doctor uh, Danell uh, talks about, will be set. After the gala's closed, after the gala's finished and the museum itself is closed. Roger. Got it. Okay. Hmm. I'm not too big of a fan of the fancy attire. It makes me look more poofy, but it is what it is. Maybe you can go get a blowout before uh, before the uh, event. Straight oh, some of your man. Hand. Just be <laughs> extra poofy. <laughs> or straight get it all straight uh but no the uh 
for for your uh, ideas for the two deep gnomes, both of you being deep gnomes around the Sword Coast area, you do know that uh, a city nearby is called Blingdenstone, uh, which is a settlement of uh, deep gnomes. Uh, if you want to po po pose as you know gem uh, merchants from that area, that might help with your with your story. Okay. What is so, the town again? Pardon? Blingdenstone. Town again? Blingdenstone. I'll put it in the chat for you here. Blingdenstone. Yep. And um, uh, we'll have to keep an eye on this. Uh, all the Arkan of the... Um, Yes, Alda Arkin is a she is an elf. The curator. Okay. Mm -hmm. And okay. Yeah, we'll have to try to find that office, possibly to see on her person or in the office. Get that. <laughs> and I do mention, of course, that there are twelve guards. Uh, in the museum uh, that are on duty at any one time. But there will also be a lot of nobles and hoity-toity fo uh, folks there uh, to where you'll be able to maybe perhaps mingle amongst them and maybe hear, you know, pick up some rumors and things of, uh, of uh, along those lines as well. Okay, so... Um... Not sure I could blend in as a noble. I'll have to figure something out. Well, Stinkfoot, uh, if they ask us question, too many questions and nobles, and uh, or if we don't want to speak to them, we can just kind of sort of possibly just look at each other like we don't understand what they're saying and start speaking in our, our normal language, uh, well, deep gnome language. And uh, we could just say, keep in mind that Waterdeep is the largest city on the Sword Coast and is full of all different races and uh, walks of life and religions. Uh, many different nobles from different uh, lineages and heritages and such like that. So, uh, and the outfit that you're given does not require you to use any sort of disguise kit or anything of that nature. Uh, it automatically will, you know, you just have to carry yourself as a noble to convince them. <laughs> but before we begin the outside uh, reconnaissance of the uh, museum, it is the top of the hour. So what we're going to do is go ahead and take our first break. We're going to take a, a break at the top of each hour. So we'll have two five-minute breaks this evening. And when we come back after this one, uh, it looks like we have a, a few viewers in the uh, uh, chat room tonight. So we'll maybe chat with them a little bit uh, before we uh, continue on with the game. Does that sound all right for everyone? Sounds good to me. Great. All right. So everyone, we're going to take a little five-minute break. I'll be back about five after the hour. Uh, stretch, go grab some uh, beverages, grab some snacks, refresh them, and uh, we'll all be back here about five after. We'll talk to everyone then.
All right, welcome everyone back. Thank you for the uh, break. I uh, hope everyone was able to uh, uh, use the restroom, stretch your legs. Sitting at the computer uh, for more than an hour, I always try to at least every hour try to stand up for at least a minute or two. Um, but welcome back. Uh, we do have a few minutes here before we start play again with the characters moving off to uh, do a little bit of reconnaissance on the outside of the Museum of Natural History in Waterdeep. Uh, looks like we do have a few people in chat. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining in tonight. Mr. Pop Squats, good to see you as well. Burn Secure, thanks for uh, coming in. Angela's True Love, welcome. You guys have any, does anyone the, uh, watching have any questions for us about the uh, the characters, about the adventure, what uh, the, the VTT, anything like that? Feel free to ask them. Ah, uh, Ulysses, my friend, good to see you. All right. Uh -huh. welcome. Oh, you guys hear hear uh the uh my familiar is in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Every once in a while we're probably gonna end up coming up with some uh a Cali time breaks because I do have a rescue cat. She's uh, about 18 years old. We've had her for about three years. Uh she lived most of her life on the streets uh as a uh, stray. She has one of her ears clipped, uh, and she is deaf. And uh, she's at her, her older age, she's starting to rise her clouding up a little bit. Uh, so her sight's getting ready to uh, go. But uh, she has latched onto me uh, and has a very bad separation anxiety if she is away. So she's currently looking at her bed behind me and getting ready to jump up there, which if she does, will be fine. But I think my, my uh, wonderful uh, magician's assistant might be coming up here to grab her for us. <laughs> Otherwise, she might jump up. <laughs> Try to get on camera. I think we're going to use her some TikTok videos for our TikTok channel to uh, get the cat lovers to come watch us play some D&D. &D. <laughs> it's okay. I'll, I'll go, ahead, like, go ahead like this. <laughs> My wife's going to grab it. It's, it's all blurred behind me anyway. <laughs> oh, she's hilarious. But she does. Uh, she's deaf, but she makes lots and lots of noise. Uh if she can't find me or doesn't know where I'm at, she starts basically screaming. <laughs> I was chatting with Angelus before the stream that uh, I don't know why I took a melee weapon as a squishy wizard. Did you trade out uh, staff for the dagger? I, I did not yet. I was thinking about trading out the staff for a dagger so I could stand behind the front line and pluck, throw oh. darts. But There's right now I don't have the staff. Yeah, but that's what your firebolt's for, right? I hope. Yeah. <laughs> That's what cantrips are for. Yeah. Have cast join their games too. Nice, burn secure. Yeah. Yeah. So I had three. She was going to be our fourth at the time, and the other ones have since passed away. And she's been the past, I want to say, year and a half by herself, which she loves. We actually moved to a new, we sold our house and moved into a condo. And just because she's been so many different places, she had no problem adjusting to the new place at all, which is nice. Ulysses, thanks for coming in to watch as well, brother. It's been a long time since I've uh, had a chance to play with you. Uh, Ulysses is a great dungeon master as well. Really great. Yeah, I actually am looking forward to them responding to my buddy in the Discord talking about some homebrew content they were working on. Nice. I'm curious to see what happens over there. Yeah, if those of you who haven't joined our uh, community Discord, but sometimes I'll pop up here in the chat, uh, but you can go down below us here in the About section. There should be a Discord panel. You can click right on there and join our community Discord. Uh, that way, uh, you go ahead. when you get in there, you'll have to accept our code of conduct. Uh, and then after you go through that, you can select different roles, what, what type of information you want to see in the server, if you want to see stuff about Adventurers League, if you want to see stuff about our streams. Uh, if you want to see stuff about D and D news and one D and D play tests as they come out, uh, you'll be able to see those in the uh, Discord server as well. And then, if you happen to want to play uh, some of your games on the Discord server with, or play some of your games with uh, your friends and family, or with uh, new people on the Discord server, if you go down to the bottom, there's a spot that's called uh, uh, Tavern uh, Tavern Rooms. Uh, let me double check what's inside. The, yeah, game taverns below. Uh, if you click on that area, you'll see a little uh, thing for the tavern rules. 
and you just read through those and once you accept that all of those taverns will open up for you to be able to invite people to play uh, Dungeons and Dragons uh, in there uh, on the server itself all right well you guys ready to get back into the game oh sure all right so let's test out to make sure that our uh Yep, everything's working fine on my end here. So let me go to the next section. And we can start looking about uh, the outs outside of the uh, Museum of Natural History. Uh, looking around the ground floor, are you? how are you approaching this? Are you going to approach it, you know, just kind of nonchalantly like tourists? Uh, I'm assuming you're not putting on your gala clothes yet. You're just leaving your normal adventuring equipment and such like that on uh, to check things right. out. Yes, normal clothes. Um, yeah, I wasn't going to try to do anything shady. I was just, you know, just yeah, of walking around, looking around, you know, having a little sketchbook, drawing some, drawing some photos, you know, like normal tourists would do. Yeah. Depending on how the guard and everything works, we, I would recommend, possibly staying in a group. But more on the dispersed side, we can still see each other, but we're not walking in a cluster. So it doesn't quite look like we are together together, but, you know, people in the same space. They are going to see us tonight. We don't want to have them see us twice in one day and be like. So why don't we just go ahead and do this? Why don't we have everyone, let's, let's go ahead and make a group stealth check. Uh, this, this isn't necessarily to be completely hidden or quiet or anything like that. It's just more of a, 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 a check to see if you can, you know, remain nonchalant. So if you want to roll performance instead, you can do that as well. An inconspicuous check? <laughs> and you can, there you go. Nonchalant exactly. check. I don't know, fly uh, casually. I will definitely go for stealth over performance. Nice. Oh, yes. Everyone got an 18 or better. So, yeah, you are all blending completely into the crowd around the outside of the natural the Museum of Natural History. First thing that you notice is the front. Uh, it's not that doesn't have like a, a rather large uh, front or any sort of awnings over it or anything like that. It's a, just a fairly simple few steps up to a, a set of double doors uh, that rest just off of the street, about 10 feet off of the street. Uh, and that's the front entrance. You do not see any windows on the on the first or the uh, second floor. Uh, do not seem to have any windows uh, to the outside, uh, looking to the outside. Seems definitely enclosed. Uh, everyone give me insight checks. You got it. Seems normal to me. <laughs> Yeah, Stinkfoot, you probably, with that 16, you probably get the idea that's mostly because of all of the different displays that they have uh, set up in the different uh, floors and such. Are, uh, the no windows, obviously, any sun coming through uh, would have a chance to, you know, mar or, uh, you know, dim the, uh, the, the displays and you know, kind of mess them up. And they probably have certain lighting set up inside, so you don't notice any windows on uh, the first or second floor. Uh, you do see towards the top that there is some sort of uh, third floor area uh, that you can see, uh, but you would have to probably go to the top of a nearby building uh, to look around to see if you could see some sort of uh, entrance or skylight or anything of that nature. Uh, but walking around the back of the uh, uh, museum, you do notice that there is a basement that has a uh, ramp that comes out to the uh, alley behind it, perhaps maybe loading where they would load in uh, different uh, uh, items, artifacts that come into the museum. And it does uh, itself also have a large set of, uh, uh, a very large set of double doors, but each one of these is about uh, seven and a half feet uh, wide, uh, each one of those. So it's about 15 foot overall uh, to get into the, uh, if you were to try to enter uh, from the back. Hmm. Are there any sewer grates around this museum? 
Uh, you can go ahead and give me an investigation check. Can I assist him with that? Sure. Okay. Okay. That is called giving the help action. And that will give whoever makes the roll advantage for those of you, uh, of you that aren't aware of uh, 5th edition rules. Uh, 21 investigation. Excellent. Yes, there are some uh, some uh, sewer access uh, here and there um, that you do note out. Uh, it might be a little strange, you know, trying to go into the sewers in the middle of the day. Um, but that's your call if you want to try something of that nature. Uh, I will let you know that you, since you were the one that pointed them out, that the privies are on the second floor. So that's a lot of sewage to uh, crawl through. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from the Underdark. It'll be like a nice spa day for me. <laughs> oh, there is something there. Um, yeah, so um, you mentioned not being able to see the attic window. Uh, I'm very interested in the attic window access to the roof if we needed it. Um. The nearby buildings, how close are they? Are, are there, is there any thing, I don't know, how close are the nearby buildings, or and what are they? You could probably get up to the top of one of them, uh, maybe, uh, there's a couple of them that are, are residences uh, and such like that, but there's, there's probably one that you can get a vantage point. Uh, you might have to crawl up the side of the building itself. Uh, in order to get up to the top without having to go through like the residences and such like that, uh, you do notice that the one of them. Uh, give me a uh, another. Uh, give me a perception check. Twenty. Wow, you're all rolling great tonight. Uh, you do notice that one of the residential buildings does have a fire escape uh, on the side of it. If you wanted to climb up uh, to the uh, top of the uh, roof to uh, try to get a glance over to the uh, attic area of the. Museum of Natural History. I'm all for that. Um, if there is, uh, how close is are the building rooftops together? Would there be any way to no, get from not, one rooftop to the other? Uh, if you use the grappling hook, you might be able to get a rope across there. Um, but you it's not jumpable. Uh, even with hops, with their great hop jumping ability, might be able to make it, but it would still be with a with a Reginald, might still be a little uh, uh, dangerous. To do oh, let me tell you, at level one, I don't got a whole lot of hops. <laughs> 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 that is that is an ability that scales as I do. <laughs> yes. Okay. You want to pose as, um, the fire inspector. You and I go up, take some notes, take some measurements, pretend we're checking out the fire escape for the. Uh, Water deep uh, town. Probably sure, better. if anyone asks, that's what we are. We are a fire inspectors with the fire brigade of the local 2021 uh, fire brigade inspection crew. I'm, I'm going to make some official marks with my chalk on the fire escape. I'll have my spell book out as my uh, sure. official water deep contractor clipboard. Okay. And we're going to go uh, start checking fire escapes for safety for the city. Yeah, you can uh, easily do that. No one really stops you from you know doing that because it does look like you're working some sort of official business. Uh, you can get up there to the roof, and you can definitely see that indeed there is a skylight on the small uh, building, almost almost like a dome kind of kind of coming off of the top of the museum. Uh, there is indeed a skylight, about ten foot by ten foot uh, skylight, kind of shaped like a pyramid uh, with four. Uh, Slanting sides of glass. Okay. So, all right. Well, I'm satisfied with that. Uh, thinking to myself, and then I say it out loud. Uh, hey, uh, it may not be the best way to get out, but it could be a way to get in, possibly. But in the worst case scenario, if there was a way inside, if we see that from the inside, we can go up and out of the skylight if we have to, to uh, you know, as a way of egress later on. We're, we're fire inspectors. We could just pull the fire alarm and get everyone out, say there's a problem. With this the oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, yes, the fire, fire central. Fire. Poop. <laughs> oh, okay. Right, so, so, yeah. Uh, 
I was going to say that's a fairly good. Uh, that's really only the only thing you're really going to get from uh, uh, casing the outside uh, of it. And uh, you spend a good hour or so doing that, and uh, it's about probably another hour, maybe uh, till the gala. Well, um, figure take some time and get out of the area so we're not just hanging out right before. Enter okay. separately and meet up well inside. Does does that I seem think, logical to you guys? Think, yeah, that sounds good. But I think yeah, we we since we know the layout of with the map and everything, perhaps we could uh, enter separately and meet uh, within an hour. It's upstairs, the, some kind of allosaurus, whatever an allosaurus is, you know. Snap says I know what an allosaurus is, but allosaurus. Yeah, let's meet at the thing in the middle and the upstairs. Sound good? Pair of notes, and then we can go our separate ways. Maybe just, you know, briefly and then separate again so they don't think we're together. Uh, we have a total of a two hour window. What is it, six to eight? Mm -hmm. Six bells to eight bells? Okay. So, yeah, I think if we. Uh, do a recon for an hour together. Uh, I think Dan, if we can kind of can continue our uh, charade of being uh, of, of something, I just had an idea of uh, we could even be there to not only inspect the gyms since we're uh, coming from uh, uh, was it uh, Blendenstone? Uh, you know, we are really interested in gyms and minerals. But uh, you know, we can if anyone else asks, we can say we well, are here to inspect the tapestries. You know, we're looking <laughs> at the tapestries, you know, and the terrible, right. uh, terrible Scottish accent that we can try to do. I'm sure we can come up with some well, kind of was, uh, strange water deep accent. I believe I'll go ahead and bring tokens over to uh, the new map. Give me a second here. And you will be in the middle at the bottom. This is a fairly large map, so let me know if it uh, takes a little bit of time to uh, uh, load up for you. Ooh, yep, it, nothing's happening on my side. While we're waiting, over there yet. who is going to be holding the bag with all of our stuff in? Good question. I was actually getting ready to ask you the same thing. Because if all of our bag? gear is in there, one of us has to be holding it and seem inconspicuous. Yes. Whoever. I don't I don't have any preference to holding it. I mean um Yeah, you will have to determine that because that's gonna have all of your adventuring gear, all of your armor, all of your weapons. Would it be easiest to hide on the fluffy bunny? Under your skirt, under your fancy dress robes. I mean, I did his fur. Probably be pretty simple to tuck in there. Yeah. Okay. So uh, have Reginald okay. carry the bag of holding. All right. Reginald, yes, carry the the bag. Don't get called holding the bag, Reginald. <laughs> We're going to leave so them all. You know time. that the gala itself is going to be taking place from six to eight. Uh, the museum is open to the public today. Uh, however, only the gemstone wing on the second floor is closed for the ticketed gala. Uh, as you get up to the uh, Museum of Natural History, you do see uh, the facade of the uh, museum boasts enormous columns on each side of the door uh, and the uh, elegant archway hewn from marble. You see cosmopolitan visitors bustle about the entrance, including some clad in sleek formal wear. Mm. Well, I, uh, I'll just kind of say, you know, stink. You ready to go? And uh, I immediately adopt a pose of uh, trying to appear like I fit my attire, not like I'm looking around at anything, I, I immediately stick my nose in the air, hold my shoulders back, and just, you know, just sort of hold my hand out, like, oh, hmm. Okay. I don't really care to be here. I'm just putting on an air of disdain, but mm, mild curiosity to see okay. who sees me. And the door does open, and 
do notice that there are many people uh, dressed uh, in, again, formal wear, uh, all around, kind of looking about at the different displays. Uh, as you, uh, the doors open uh, for you to, and, and for the public to come in, you do notice there's a little reception area right here at the beginning. Can everyone see the uh, map? Is it loaded up for everyone? It's still loading for me, but yes. It, it's a little, little buggy. It's loading. Mm hmm. But if I can't. If you scroll to the bottom, it looks on the map is black because we haven't been on it. So if you go to the bottom of the big black block, there should be a little bit of. Mm hmm. Yeah, oh, scroll yeah. down to the bottom of the map. You'll be able to see yourself. I've sat in many a Roll20 room being like, where is this map? My screen's black. <laughs> scroll out or zoom out, scroll down. Uh, I will bring in the chat so they can see. Nice. Yes, and you will be seeing from those watching, you will be seeing from the view of Reginald as uh, Reginald is uh, uh, running our stream. So we have his his vision of what he sees up. Uh, we do have it on explore mode. So the places that you explore when you leave that area, they will still you will still be able to see them, but they'll be grayed out for you. So you won't know what's really going on in those areas. Okay, so it'll show us if we've been in and out of rooms before. Yep. Okay. Alrighty. Well, I'll so Scott, give them a couple of minutes. But as you, uh, you could easily step inside now if you wish. Uh, you see uh, the grand entrance of the museum. Uh, statues depicting robed human uh, women flank the sides of this public mingling space, which boasts a marble column in the center. The museum's information desk is situated just inside the front doors, and to the north is a grand staircase draped in rich carpet. And you do you notice that there uh immediately uh you notice and can everyone see the uh the, the hit point bars on the, the tokens yes okay uh so but you do notice uh, immediately that there are two guards that are stationed uh, in this room one to the west and one to the east okay uh, you all uh, the notice? two guards i was going to ask on the uh on the east um according There's to the a guard map here mm -hmm. and a guard here Okay. Uh, the guard at the east, um, at the three doors that I can see, mm -hmm. are they marked in any way? Do I know what is an office, you per se, have, a guard office? You would have to go up to those different rooms and areas to, and actually to that door to inspect it yourself. From this distance, you wouldn't be able to tell if they're locked. Okay. If they're offices, they most likely are locked. Understood. Okay. Yeah, well. Um, I'd like to just walk that way. And do okay. I see an elf, elf anywhere in the crowd? Uh, indeed, you do. If you'll notice, you should be able to see uh, Alda okay. Arkin right up here. Okay. All right. Um, uh, just chatting with a couple of the nobles. Uh, obviously, uh, the gala hasn't started yet. It, it's, oh, it's about time for the gala to start, and you do see a few of the nobles starting to make their way up to the second floor. All right. Well, uh, to not appear awkward, I think we should go. Uh, kind of uh, look over at Stink and sort of walk by Reginald, you know, just like we don't you even really know him. You can see to your west uh, that there are some uh, pathways to go in to look at some of the different um, displays. You also notice that there's some shops, like gift shops and such like that, uh, up in these uh, little corners by the stairwell. Okay. And we know this from Danelle's map, right? The displays? Yes. Well, I think we should walk over to the east and just kind of casually go by, you know, following the the crowd, kind of head that way, uh, looking in particular at the doorways as we go by this guard and not really okay. disturb him or do anything and just kind of pretend like we're, you know, we don't care that he's even there. 
bored. Okay. I'm very bored with all of this. Um, but you're going to act like you don't care, but at the same time, you do care. Here, correct? Oh, yeah, we care. He's there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, go ahead and give me perception checks uh, okay. as you're walking up into that area. And I'm going to do the same thing on the <laughs> west side. Okay. Um, yeah, uh, definitely seems like this guy, because this car doesn't necessarily stand stationary, he does move up and down uh, around the areas here with these uh, doors. He even actually, you see him uh, come over to this noble and ask them to kind of step uh, a little bit away from the wall, and they do step out there for him. Uh, and uh, he kind of glances down uh, there, goes down, and you do see him check the, the make sure that the door is locked, and he does come up make a pass for each one of those doors uh, from them checking to see if they're being locked, uh, for them to be locked. And he uh, goes back to his post. Uh, over here, Reginald, on your side, this guard uh, just seems to be scanning the room, really, uh, just watching, uh, looking at the different nobles and things of that nature. Oh, you probably need a perception check from me as well. Sure. Uh, Show off. <laughs> um. As you're kind of approaching this area, uh, looking back into into this room here, uh, that uh, little display back in that uh, area there, give me one second. In this one? Yes. Okay. Uh, in that area, that uh, display, sorry, my roll 20 is giving me a little jumpy here. There we go. Um. You see artificial plants made of wood, silk, and other materials sprout from artfully arranged planters. Tall ferns, bushes with strange berries, and slender trees represented alongside placards about the ancient plant life. Um, but you also notice with your 16 that there's a very odd look to this back wall here. Perhaps maybe like a concealed door of some sort. If I, I, I would like to approach the guard and ask if I can look into the room with all the plants. It's very interesting. I've never seen them oh, yeah. made that way. It says that the displays are open for to the public and all gala attendees, and he kind of steps aside and uh, gestures for you to uh, head into there. You better oh. start eating those plants, bunny boy. <laughs> <laughs> just all of the silk plants just shoving them in my <laughs> Giant strawberries and off, carrots. I did start off the uh, descriptive text with artificial plants. Yes, he did. My intelligence uh, yeah, ain't that great. Know. We don't know. He's you uh, do notice, you do notice, Reginald, that uh, there is another guard that seems to be patrolling in this area. Uh, you also notice to the north there's another room with these artificial plants and such, uh, and down to the south there's another uh, display with artificial plants as well. A couple of nobles kind of milling about in that area, uh, looking at them, kind of chuckling themselves, sipping on a little bit of uh, champagne or elven wine, being. Uh, Bought around with uh, a few uh, different servers. Um, uh, you do also know there's a hallway to your north, and then there's a hallway to your south. Uh, stink and snaps, you notice that uh, every once in a while, I believe, uh, up over here, as I mentioned, uh, our little uh, shops, display racks filled with like tunics, bandanas, books, bric a brac, most uh, blazoned with the museum's logo. And you do notice that there's some plush benches up there uh, with uh, uh, seating areas as well. And you do see that the eastern shop uh, is called the Historian's Gifts, while the western shop does seem to sell books and artifact replicas labeled uh, the Archaeologist uh, Spade is the name of those uh, two different shops. If I were to trip and fall and try to fire something under this door is there um gap enough there's not a gap there no these are fairly made heavy doors i won't try to trip and fall and throw something under this um well uh, let's go to the room, gift shop 
you said one of the walls had an odd look to it. Yes. You indeed do discover now that you're in the room that there is a concealed door on this wall with your oh. 16th perception. And sorry, Angelus, uh, I just noticed your question about the Druid Wild Shape update for 1D&D. &D. Uh, I myself have not uh, really read much of the new 1D&D &D, uh, updates, uh, mostly because myself, I really don't speculate a lot about how things, are, what things are going to be finally in the playtests. Uh, obviously, with what we've seen recently with the OGL and with some of the other stuff, they do tend to listen to the community. Uh, when they talk about these things. So I'm really hopeful that, you know, because the fifth edition is great, and uh, hopefully the changes they make to uh, the new stuff isn't going to be too drastic. But no, I apologize. I have not had a chance to check those out. I might have some time this week, but uh, we'll see. <laughs> Tuesday night. So, Reginald, did you want to continue around uh, on that side? Uh, yeah, stink and snap? I'm going to keep heading up on here. Okay. No, nod to the guard as I pass, but in the top, uh, top you part also there. Noticed, with your passive perception, there is a, another concealed door right there. Okay. Uh, up in that area there to the east, Stink and Snaps, uh, you happen to be at the, uh, the Historian's Gifts. Uh, you see it uh, sells cheap souvenirs and such. Uh, you do I notice that under the stairs back here, there is a small uh, locked door. I am going to pick up one of the books. Books are over here on this side. Darn it. I'm going to take out my spell book. And just whisper a little message to my friend Reginald. Not much going on here. How are you making out? Not much. And I would hope that Reginald knows they can reply to my message. Sure. Do you I know if I can reply to that message? Yes. <laughs> so the, um, on the map, there is something here to this door to the east there. Oh, never mind. You go ahead, Reginald. You finish your, he's sending you a message. Go ahead and say uh, what you got to say. It would seem each of the rooms on this side have a concealed door. And that is the whisper you hear uh, in response. And Snaps, as you're standing there, uh, you do see this guard kind of uh, walk over. He, he nods to the guard across the way. Uh, this guard moves uh, a little bit out more to get a little bit better advantage. And uh, he kind of come, does come over and open this door. Using a key? Uh, actually, uh, give me, both of you, give me a perception check, please. Actually, snaps with yours being a 13 passive. Oh, nice, and a 15 active. Uh, we'll, we'll go ahead and let snaps deal with this since Stink had used his uh, kind of not really as being perceptive with your five, really more concerned with the discussion and message from Reginald. Uh, but you do see snaps that uh, the guard does open the door, but he uses what he does is he reaches up and he uses a small card, like what we would think the size of a credit card type of thing, but takes it and he swipes it. Uh, along the edge of the door and you hear it click and he opens up and uh, kind of peering behind him, you know, as you're looking at the souvenirs and such like that, you do see on the other side, it appears to be some sort of break room. Uh, you see some boxes of display, uh, display supplies, uh, display supplies stacked in the corners and chairs around a circular table in the middle. And he kind of walks over. You see him pick up a, a small little snack uh, off the tail and then takes a swig of uh, a drink and kind of walks back out uh, after he uh, cleans a little bit off of his uniform and walks back out, and they, he does just shut the door behind him. And he uses the card, and you hear it click again. Oh. Okay. I will, when it's convenient, let Snaps know what I heard from Reginald about the concealed doors. Okay. Well, I'm and in this I, uh... top room. Oh, go ahead, Snaps. You go first. I was just—I was going to say I share with uh, Stink what I—I I saw that it was inside. If he wasn't looking, I saw that he used a card 
to uh, open that up as I'm looking at uh, some little gizmos and gifts, you know, a gym, fake gym or something. And I'm like, uh, he yeah. uses a card to get in the, the door there to those offices so that we can may be able to get some information in there. But uh, Reginald has secret doors. Now I'm intrigued. So Snap and Stink, do you want to go over where Reginald is uh, right now, or do you want to uh, continue looking about as you had initially decided that after an hour, you were going to meet upstairs on the second floor? Um, but if you want to meet up now, that's fine as well. And keep in mind, your whisper, your message is a cantrip, uh, is a message, uh, cantrip of a spell that you can cast all day. So if you need to keep casting it, it's fine. Um. Well, they're deliberating. From my current position in the top room there, mm -hmm. can I get a closer look at the curator and possibly gleam some of what they're discussing? Sure. Uh, actually, looking about uh, at uh, the uh, curator, uh, one of the things, uh, go ahead and uh, let me give me a second here to uh, get this section. Sure. Um, Go ahead and give me a, uh, per a, a perception check. My apologies. I'm waiting for one of these to be real bad. They've been good so far. Don't say it out loud. Oh, they do. They're still good. Uh, you do notice that uh, the uh, curator does seem to be chatting with a person that you get and kind of find out that their name is Countess Helen Danforth, uh, a member of an ancient titled family. Uh, but with that perception, you can tell by looking at her clothing, it does seem to look uh, very, very posh and very, very uh, expensive. But at close glance with your 22 perception, you can see that some of it's a little frayed here and there. Doesn't look like it's actually been well cared for, been cared for, but not extremely well, like someone very wealthy. So she probably doesn't really have that much wealth. So it's not uh, nude fancy attire, but it is worn fancy attire. Yes, worn fancy attire. Okay. And then you hear, uh, as the uh, uh, curator kind of nods and walks to them to walk over to, you know, greet other people, uh, you hear uh, Countess Helen Danforth say, hmm, mentioning to the other noble, says, the curator's been fidgeting with her clutch all night. Has she got some sort of bad news? Maybe she's about to fire someone. Fidgeting with their clutch like their bag? Yes. And you notice as she's walking away, but I'm going to still let you get this information from your 22 uh, mm -hmm. perception, that she is holding a clutch that she has behind her back and has it gripped tightly in both hands. Hmm. And uh, as you walk over there, Snap and Stink, she actually comes up to the two of you. And uh, she walks over and is like, oh, I see uh, more nobles come to the gala. Uh, did you uh, already have your tickets? Of course. Uh, they will be taking them upstairs uh, to enter into the gemstone wing. Are you donors to the museum? Uh, yes, we do have our tickets. Um, but... Uh, we are not donors as of yet, but we are considering making a gemstone addition uh, to your and making a donation. As far as we are coming from uh, Blendenstone, and we are looking to see what type of collection you have here. But I, I, I heard that possibly that it's closed today. Um, oh no, no, we, no! We deal in stones. Yeah, the, this, if you have tickets to the gala and, and you have access to the gemstone wing, we also have many archaeological uh, displays set up on the second floor as well, some of them with, with certain stones and such that, that might interest uh, uh, you. Uh, and you are nobles from Blinkstone? Oh, yes, yes. Uh... And you are? Oh, I, I am the curator. I am uh, Alda Arkin. A pleasure to meet you. And your names, please? Oh, yes. My name is Prako Mikshar. And this see, is my esteemed colleague. I am a Dr. Stinkfoot, 
alabaster grasper. I have many beautiful alabaster specimens. All right. I would have given everyone inspiration back if you had already used it because uh, Snaps did give her a false name. <laughs> Stink, however, did give us real name, so that might play out later on if you uh, uh, get caught or don't get caught. We'll see what happens. Uh, but she does, uh, of course, talk with you a little bit, making some chit chat here and there uh, about the different things, and uh, does excuse herself unless you have anything particular you want to talk to her about or ask her about. Uh, you do I, notice also with your passive perception snaps that she is clutching her clutch <laughs> with both of her hands fairly tightly behind her back. Okay. Take note of that also. And um, no, just kind of uh, turn and nod and sort of stick my nose back in the air. All right. And then she uh, goes off and talks with some more nobles. I just walk away. It looks like the room okay. I'm in continues to go north. Yep. I stick my head up that way just to kind of see where that all, where that all goes. Yep. It continues around to what you assume are more displays on the other side. Oh. And entering around, the, coming around that corner there, you do happen to notice that that uh, display there, uh, it's glass display cases, most objects related to the life in ancient water deep. You see clay pots, stone tools, scraps of leather clothes are interspersed with informal placards about their historical use. Uh, but you do happen to also notice that there's another guard kind of in rotation uh, with the other guard and the other displays over here. This guard and this guard seem to be rotating uh, through this section of the uh, displays. Does... And again, with your past perception now of 15, you do notice indeed that there is also a concealed door on this wall as well. So it would seem that they kind of, they're a crossover. Okay. Yeah. Probably. You could probably assume that. Uh, you oh. do hear this guard moving up to the north. You do see this guard moving down to the south. So that one's going down. The other one is coming going up. up. If they're both out of sight for a second. Can uh -huh. I try and stealthily peek in the door to see if it just is a straight through? You can do so if you wish. Yes, I think I would like to try that. All right. Uh, looking in the door, you do notice that uh, uh, you notice the opposite wall. You can see the door clearly on that side, uh, mm -hmm. on the uh eastern side, uh, but inside this area is, contains lots of cleaning supplies to clean the displays. Mm, but it does go all the way through. Yes. Okay. I close the door quickly before the guard would come around the bend. Sure. And continue meandering down the rest of the yep. exhibits. Uh-huh. And you do notice when you get down to the next room, yep, there indeed there's another concealed door right there. Okay. I'll uh, quickly ask Stink, um, should we go meet up with Reginald or go ahead and meet at the rendezvous point upstairs? How much time has passed so far? We've been doing this for um... an hour yet. Yeah, very fairly close to an hour, about maybe 40 minutes or so, 45 minutes. Okay. Uh, yeah, maybe we should go on up. He'll, he shouldn't, he'll, he'll meet us up there. I'm intrigued by secret doors, though. Yeah, we don't know that. We don't know anything about these secret doors. So I think, uh, I think, yeah, I would probably be curious enough to come. Okay. Yeah, you can you can all meet up uh, just to help out a little bit. Reginald kind of coming around, uh, making the rest of the tour of the uh, displays down here. You see that the, this hallway indeed connects around, and you can all meet up uh, up here in this in this, uh, this room here if you wish.
in that room. Or whatever you want in the uh, in the main uh, massive uh, entry room over here. Mm -hmm. All right, so I will. Oh, I spent too much time in the book section, but I will pick up the book again, bury my face, pull out my little wire, and just um, Reginald, what's up with these books? Do we need to check them out, or should we head upstairs? I haven't looked at any Red. books. Oh. Are there books I should you look at? And that's all you hear? Doors? <laughs> How about doors? Are there any interesting, almost <laughs> hidden doors we need to look at? Or do we have a pair? <laughs> Give me a slide of hand check with advantage, if you would, please, uh, Stinkfoot. Oh, <laughs> I knew what you meant, but I, I had to. <laughs> no, you had to. You, thank yes. you. Of course. <laughs> uh. Slide of hand, okay. Uh, the guard does not notice you casting the spell. i uh, give you advantage because you had the book uh, up uh, on your face. Uh, because it does take verbal, somatic, and material component for casting message. So I gave you the advantage since you, you were using your spell book, you know, to kind of uh, to hide yourself. So be mindful of that a little bit while you're casting, if you're casting any of your spells, and you're walking through there, because that would be something that uh, the guards would uh, kind of be interested in, and perhaps maybe want to know what's going on. Yep. But yeah, if you want to respond to the, the second message, uh, Reginald, feel free. Sorry, I was laughing at the first one. What was the second message? <laughs> Ask about the doors. doors anymore. Or should we just head upstairs? Ah, uh, um, I'll kind of meander away from the nobles that are right there next to me, and just kind of walk mm -hmm. up to the statue and look like I'm kind of talking to myself. It would seem that there's a door in between each of the exhibits on the wall that is through and through with cleaning supplies. Could be a good place to hide. Hmm. Uh, now that you're there, however, uh -oh. give me a an, an active perception check. Uh, me? Yes, please, Reginald. Oh boy! Nice. My goodness, still, you're still excellent. rocking it. I just love the fact that we have a first level character with a passive perception perception of 15. That's awesome. Uh, you happen to notice, you're kind of glancing about. You said you were looking at the statue a little bit, glancing about and such. You happen to notice that uh, the ceilings, of course, in all of these rooms are about 30 feet high. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Up above the entrance, kind of high up on the ceiling, almost concealed in the shadows, but you, without being as perceptive as you are, uh, you might not have noticed, someone normally would not have noticed it. But you do notice that there does seem to be some sort of compartment in the ceiling, right above the entrance, right about this area here. Let me draw a little shape for you out here. See that? Yes, yeah. so in the wall above the door, high up? In the ceiling. In the right ceiling. Above. Okay. Yes. Interesting. Could be traps. Could be a whole lot of things. Yeah. Um, I'm going to continue really not interacting with my party. I can probably see them on the other side of the room. I'm going to kind of meander around for a couple minutes, and then as we get close to that hour, head up the stairs. Okay. Mildly, not actively avoiding the curator, but mm -hmm. avoiding the small talk, because I don't really know what I'm going to say. So I'm just okay. making it look like I'm interested in what I'm looking at. Well, what I like to do also, which is fine, what I like to do also is use alternative means, uh, which mm -hmm. Dungeon Master 
completely empowered to do in Adventures League, uh, to uh, have players get certain information with your characters not necessarily being the most social type of characters. Uh, normally what you would do is you would be hearing a little bit of information, rumors and such like that from some of the nobles in the area uh, through chit-chatting with them, uh, making some small persuasion checks uh, to, you know, talk with them to get them to uh, give you some information. However, since your characters aren't really uh, chattable type characters, what we're going to do instead is we're going to basically have you perhaps over here a few topics, juicy tidbits of gossip and such like that from the nobles in the area. So, but all three of you, if you would, please give me a per, or a, a perception check uh, as you're kind of mingling about the crowd. And uh, if anyone, uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you know what your DC is. Your DC is a 12. It happened. I stopped it listening. And Stinkfoot, uh, wow, Stinkfoot with a 21, a, a natural 20 on his roll. Um, keep in mind, in 5th edition, they might be changing this, obviously, for a 1 D&D. I believe I heard that they did. Uh, the only time you can critically fail or succeed is on death saving throws and attack rolls. Uh, you do not uh, fail saves or uh, skill checks uh, with a natural 1. You don't automatically succeed with a natural 20 with those skill checks and such. However, I think that might be changing in 1 D&D, but we'll worry about that when that comes back around. Uh, but so Snaps and Stinkfoot, you are able to pick up a little bit other information. It's a couple of nobles talking. A doctor, a uh, Horthnar Stone Crusher, a dwarf, uh, seems to be a surgeon. Uh, you hear him say something along the lines that, uh, well, it's a. Uh, uh, I, I always heard that the curator adorns uh, adores uh, oversized vintage dolls. I've heard that she keeps one in her office that's. As big as a grown human. I'll type that in a rule 20 chat. So if you're any of you are t taking notes. And now here's Thank the uh, first. You. Uh, the first tidbit of information that. Uh, Reginald heard. Near standing near. Uh, Alda Arkin. And then Stinkfoot. You hear someone uh, speaking, a Georgina Lucina of Vandalar Hall, kind of a sneering, haughty uh, air to some sort of mining fortune, uh, mentioned something about, uh, it's unfortunate that the museum has fallen on hard financial times. Uh, if only those, they sold all those ore and gem samples they keep in the basement. I've heard there's a fortune down there. Hmm. Uh, if only that's what we were here for. So I will share this with with Snaps. Mm -hmm. I was actually just about to start chatting up that guard, but that's good enough. And there's just about about this time you do hear uh, the 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 chiming from outside and inside from the different clocks and such. It does chime seven bells, so you have about an hour left of the gala. So if everyone would like to move to the second floor, go ahead and let me know, and I'll go ahead and move everyone up there. Let's do it. Yeah. Ready? All right. So let's let me get everyone up here together, and I will move everyone over to the second floor. And yes, roll 20 is a little slow with maps this large. Oh, hey, Reginald. Do I know you? Nope. <laughs> Your Where did you hear my you. name? And there you are. You'll find yourselves on the second floor. Nah. <laughs> What is that monstrosity? Yes, take care, Burn Secure. Thanks for stopping in and watching tonight. Looks like uh, Alabastrosaurus to me. So in this room, uh, as you get up to the second floor, um, the attached skeletons of several large prehistoric monsters are on display here including the museum's most famous display, the beautifully preserved body of an Allosaurus, its leathery skin appearing supple to the touch, 
An informal placard next to the dinosaur explains it died in the Merkmire millennia ago and was naturally preserved. Display cases along the room's walls hold fossils of other local ancient predators. And you do happen to notice amongst the gnolls up here, uh, there are two guards patrolling this area as well. Okay. Um, as we're coming down the stairs, I first look up. Do I see a skylight above me? And where would it be? Uh, and also looking at the door over here. If you were to wonder where the, the uh, skylight you saw from outside from the other building, give me a insight check with advantage because you did mention that you were you know jotting down pictures and quick drawings and such like that. Yes. Uh, 20, nice. Uh, you believe that if you were to access the attic, it would be over somewhere over here. Okay. The attic would probably be up above that area. Right. Oh, they did, Angelus. I didn't know they changed that. That's awesome. That is one of the things I liked about 5th edition was that if you made a critical failure on a skill check or a save, it doesn't necessarily mean that you failed if you have enough uh, bonuses. It's likely, but not guaranteed to fail. Yeah. Especially if you're a rogue. When the rogues have their uh, you know, automatic 10, if you roll one, it's automatically a 10. So that's mm -hmm. not bad. But yeah, you do know, uh, re remember looking at the map, uh, that the privies are over here. And you also know that the entrance to the gemstone wing is over here. I'm going to skirt over to here. And I will have my book out. Since I don't have a whole lot of spells yet, I'm just going to draw in my spell book. So I'm going to flip to the back of my spell book. And I'm going to start drawing a very bad stick figure of this big creature. while. Eavesdropping on um, Mike and Bill over here. I'll just start scribbling and. Uh, as anyway. you're looking at it, you see that Allosaurus looks like a really beautifully preserved specimen. Um, but you also notice that uh, display's base. You notice a small hatch covered by a panel of buttons. And I know that this is a guard. Yep. And where's the bait? Those, which of these squares is the? Uh, we're gonna stay right here on this west side. Okay. I'll uh, try to nonchalantly, chalantly gesture to Snaps, give him the the eyes and the nose, and be like, "Hey." Sure. I love uh, some sort of control panel. Okay, so I'm just gonna give me an arcana check. Uh oh. What are wizards good at? Anything? Hopefully, arcana. arcana. Hey, that's okay because your DC actually was a 10. Uh, you, you believe that. The way that it, the looking of the statue itself and that control panel, that it actually might be some sort of animatronic statue. Hmm. I whisper to Snaps, watch this. Um, I excuse my way through these two folks over here. And as I prop up to start drawing, I oh, drop my pen down onto the Good. And clumsily try to press as many buttons on this base as possible while trying to pick up my ink stick. Okay, so you, what you're wanting to do is in the middle of the gala, try to animate this. Yeah, yep. Uh, as you get down there, you do realize that you would probably need some sort of tinkerer's tools or thieves' tools, in addition to being skilled with Arcana, to try to overload whatever magics control this. Okay, well, I can't say I tried. I didn't try. And I'll just go back to drawing and listening and eavesdropping. 
okay? And you also notice uh, with your passive perception snaps in this room as well, uh, that the east wall over here on the east wall has a three foot high, three foot wide, five foot, uh, three foot high, three foot wide uh, air vent. Here? Over here on the east wall, yep. East wall. Hmm. How far from the ground? Uh, it's about 10 feet above the floor. Definitely require an athletics or acrobatics check to reach it. Or mage okay. hand. Definitely take note of that. It itself definitely looks hot, a little bit heavier than what a mage hand would be able to uh, to lift. But you do see a few uh, uh, of the nobles uh, do walk over and they give the guard a... Uh, my my apologies. The vent is right here oh, on the wall. Okay, uh, okay. Come over to the guard that's outside of this uh, hall. Uh, it does give him his ticket, and then the noble does enter into the uh, area where the gemstone wing would be. And it is the top of the hour. We're after the top of the hour, so let's go ahead. We got about a little bit, uh, about an hour or so left of tonight's, maybe a little less. Uh, so let's go ahead and take our second break right here. Uh, we'll take another five minute uh, intermission. That way, everyone can use the restroom, stretch their legs, uh, refresh your beverages, and such like that. And uh, we'll come back and finish our uh, our uh, scouting reconnaissance of staking out the uh, Museum of Natural History. All right, we'll be back shortly, everyone. Please stick around.
All right, welcome back everyone. I uh, hope uh, everyone got their drinks and their snacks where it leaves the restroom. Uh, Ulysses, good night. Sorry if you've already left the, uh, the stream. I apologize, I didn't see you uh, saying goodbye there. Uh, oh, they changed the uh, play test and they changed it back. That's nice. Again, that's an example of what I'm talking about. They all uh, obviously fix things uh, once they hear from the uh, uh, community about what's going on. Well, we don't need those guys. Well, well, they're playing with buttons. I'm going to stick my head into <laughs> the... <laughs> Well, I, I'm going to stick my head in the room to the west just to see what's in here, see if I can spot anything interesting before heading into the gala. Uh, it, uh, the space holds a mix of uh, cafeteria-style tables and lounge furniture. Uh, there's a uh, counter in the northeast corner. It sits underneath a sign that reads, Unearth Cafe. You open, and you do notice that there's one guard just inside the door, but it does seem to be an area where you can purchase snacks and things like that. Uh, you do notice uh, if you uh, head in a little bit farther that uh, there is a passage to the south and a passage to the north. While they're doing that, I, I lean over to Stink. I say, well, perhaps we could do something with this later. I don't know what you're doing down there, but I remember, uh, you know, I, I say, I, I want to see the archaeology. Then I kind of stand up and I, you know, snaps. He thinks he's being regal. He probably looks like a, a doofus, but he thinks he's being <laughs> a noble. So he's trying to walk through with his nose in the air and he starts walking towards uh, the way that Reginald is going uh, because he wants to see this archaeology. Yeah. And if, if you look at your rough map, you do know that there's a bunch of displays down below as well. Mm hmm. Oh. When uh, when Stink, snap you want to go with him, or did you want to investigate what you initially had talked about uh, when we were we were looking at the rough map? The privies uh, are over here. If you wanted to go examine those, well. So if I'm in the if I'm in the gala, like actually in the gemstone exhibit that we haven't gone into yet, correct. Um, when that's over, will I have time to sneak into the privy, or when it's over, we're all out? Oh, we've got about an hour left. Okay, I, I do want to get to the gemstone area, but I kind of want the whole group in there with us. Well, does, Snaps did mention something about wanting to check out the archaeological uh, displays and is heading in the direction where Reginald is. Mm -hmm. I thought that's where we them? were would meeting up, was the archaeology. Would like to, yeah, would you like to go to the privy room, or do you want to meet up with them and discuss where you want to go next? Hang on, I will meet up nonchalantly. Sure, sure. Uh, so again, as I mentioned, this room, uh, more of a cafe. The guard walking around here and there. I'm going to just go this way. There's, there wasn't there a hallway this way to the top? That way we're all not going through this same doorway over yeah. here. I'm just going to... You notice that, yes, indeed, there is a uh, hallway along the top there. Um, just so the guards don't notice us all going down the same. Yep, it's uh, it connects the uh, privies to the uh, prehistoric predators exhibit and the uh, unearthed cafe. A stink. Give me a perception check as you pass by that counter. Mm -mm -mm. Made this one for investigations. Wah, wah. You can do investigation instead if you wish. Really? Um, no, because I already. Well, what would it be? Eight plus whatever. Uh, so instead of eight plus one, I'll keep the roll. To be sure. fair, we'll do a uh, eight plus five. 
13. Uh, coming by, you do notice that uh, underneath the counter over here, there seems to be a stashed uh, little till for the cafe. <laughs> I'm the <laughs> yeah, I'm giving him opportunities for some controlled chaos. <laughs> But with that, though, you also could assume easily that there are probably some sort of uh, boxes like that down by the uh, two shops on the first floor, too. Uh, snaps heading down into that uh, area there. You do see some of the displays. Uh, fossils with small prehistoric creatures arranged here, some as fully reconstructed skeletons. Uh, includes uh, micro raptors, uh, orthopods, dwarven elephants. An ancestor to the cockatrice. Uh, informal placards tell the story of these creatures and their bones discovery. I, uh, see linger it, get... Go ahead. I was going to say I linger for a few moments, uh, just sort of pro- feigning interest uh, at uh, these weird creatures that I really don't care about at all because they look mm-hmm. disgusting. And uh, But I do kind of look back and to see if uh, my friends are following me, pretending that I don't even know them, uh, and just uh, try to continue my way on down through the displays, just sort of... You, you know. do notice down in this area, there are another three guards patrolling this area. Okay. Well, I just walk by like I don't even pay attention, like I don't even care that they're there mm-hmm. at all, and uh, yep. look at this next room. Uh, very similar creatures uh, all throughout uh, this room, and it looks appears uh, very similar to the room beyond, but it does seem like there's more different displays up ahead. Okay. I'll uh, I'll just uh, continue on. If I'm unaccosted, I'll continue on uh, oh, into yeah, the next room. Uh, uh, I do pause a little bit here. If this is the Underground Wonders area, I okay, uh, will one pause moment. there because Hold I'm. Uh... You can bring yourself back to the other room. Okay, sorry. You can pause there so I can go ahead and give you your information. Uh, but first, uh, as Reginald and Stink, are you falling behind? Okay, I, that is the underground wonder. Sorry. Yes. I was going to take out my sketchbook like I was drawing, write how many guards have you counted so far, and then lean over towards Reginald and be like, that's a pretty good likeness, isn't it? And just. Hold up my book and give him a funny look. Sure. Uh, but yeah, Reginald, you can see the three guards as well. I think. Mm-hmm. Let me check with your vision. Mm-hmm. Yes, you can see the three guards. Uh, but snaps, I was mentioning when you were passing by here with your passive perception. You do notice that there's another concealed door very similar to the ones that were described to you by Reginald downstairs. In this little hallway? Yep. Right on this north wall of this little hallway. Okay. I take note of that. As I'm doing my sketches, you know, I look at each little display and I kind of look at it and I I draw like I'm I'm doing a sketch of this thing into writing down information. Like it's I'm very sure. interested, but really I'm noting that there's a uh, secret passage or, or not secret passage, secret door or door there there at yeah. that. Uh, uh, but as you yeah, you're coming out of the creatures of the past exhibit. You do enter into the underground wonders exhibit, and looking about, you do see glittering ore and gemstones arranged in velvet-backed uh, display cases, and formal. Placards of again explaining the local uh, geological history. Okay. Um, I do actually spend a little bit of time here because this is okay. uh, Snaps is actually uh, uh, interested. In, I'm sort of waiting my, for my friends to, but mm-hmm. he's he is uh, cursorily interested in this anyway. Um, Okay. Even though he was uh, playing a role, he has a, he wants to learn a little more about these gemstones of the deep. Well, as you examine the stones on display, you realize that one of them contains a chunk of jade, similar in size to weight, a size and weight, uh, to the description that Doctor Donnell gave you of the Merkmeyer stone. 
Um, are the guards facing me? I would like to take that piece of jade if they're not. Well, uh, it is in a display case that oh, is locked. Okay. That is locked. Ah, uh, okay. I'm looking, you know, with you being a rogue, looking down, you think it'd be a really simple uh, check to make with your thieves tools to uh, uh, be able to uh, get the stone. I probably am going for it if it they are now. not looking. I was going to say, it probably might not be best to do it now is that if they discover it missing, that would, you know, cause you to, you know, uh, give away something's going on. But, you know, since you're just casing the joint right now and plan on coming back after it's closed to get the gem, uh, it might be worth, rem- or to get the uh, Merkmeyer stone, it might be uh, good to remember that that's there in case you need it. I take out my... Uh charcoal and pad and i continue to do yeah. sketching making notes that that jade may be useful i just l- I like would the way also it looks like to note that i have all of your tools right now that is true thank you <laughs> you did the grab i was like okay i can't grab anything i can't even uh, maybe i can i can make a uh Lock pick out of one of these bones of these displays, but of course, then I would get kicked Just out of the museum. Snap off a toe, use it to pick a lock. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, I just uh, make note of it for now. But you Continue do know on. the only other display that you haven't seen up here yet is the archaeological display, which is towards the uh, end of this hall. I'm gonna you on. wander through the exhibits. Trying to make it to the rendezvous. Yep. I give them a little bit of space, but do the same thing following along. Mm hmm. Stopping for a couple seconds in each of the rooms, looking around. Yeah. I mentioned you to get... this guard. Go ahead. I was say, I mentioned to this guard, wow. Pretty boring job, huh? Oh, yeah. At least you don't have to watch the food court. True, true. That's poor poor old Billy Quartermile has to watch that one. He kind of chuckles. He is a dwarf, by the way. Get to look at food all day, but you can't have any. That just doesn't sound nice. We got plenty of snacks in our break room. Can't wait to pay off this debt to the museum so I can get out of here. Grinder Badlax is my name. You owe a debt to the museum. Yeah, I really don't. Uh, uh, I don't like to stay in one place at you know too long. And yeah, I, I was in here just checking it out, you know, checking out the sites. I like to go to different cities and check out sites, and I broke some of their stuff, and I'm just trying to pay off the debt that I owe the museum. And then once I'm done with that, I'm out. And I'll put that in chat for you. I appreciate that. So you're here to check out the stone too. Don't have much time left. I want to turn over your tickets if you got them uh, up there at the uh, entrance. And he kind of starts uh, nods to you all and kind of starts making his way back in this direction. Oh, that's the guard you're talking to. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. I'll be heading that way momentarily. And then snaps as you get into that final room. Uh, picks, trowels, brushes, and other archaeological tools are on display here. Uh, informal uh, information packets as well. Uh, placards uh, label them as tools famous local es- experts used to dig up the wonders found in the museum. Murals along the south wall depict famous digs. Of course, you do notice that there are the two guard- guards in this, uh, this area here and the previous area they were in kind of patrol from room to room about every five minutes or so. 
you do notice kind of reading the informational placard that uh, this exhibit tells the story of the infamous Rogerson dig where most of the creatures in the prehistoric predators exhibit were found. Uh, studying the exhibits uh, with your passive perception, Reginald, and actually, uh, distinctly, you have passive 11 uh, and snaps. You all notice that there are two items on display that are flawless weapons. There is a beautiful dagger and a flawless looking hand axe inside a uh, one of the glass display cases. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, so I uh, <clears throat> kind of quickly kind of scanned the room and looking at them. I also I'm looking at this door. Uh, what kind of door is it? Is it? Uh, uh, one second, uh, as you all pass through there, Reginald and Snaps, you also notice it's a concealed door right here. Oh, right on that top part of the yep. medium. Yep. Okay. Correct. Is it just the one at the start of the hall and the end of the hall that had the yeah. hideaway doors? Yes, correct. Yep. Okay. Just the one down here and the one that you just passed through. Uh, those doors look very similar to the ones in the office, as very uh, as uh, well as the one that lead, led in from the prehistoric predators exhibit into the gemstone wing. Uh, you can easily assume that they are locked and they can only be accessed via uh, those pass cards that the guards seem to have. This door here? Yes. This door here in the room. Yep, correct. I wonder if we could get our hands on one of those. Be nice. Um, uh, let's go look at the stone. As we... Uh... And look at this door one last time. And... Sure. Uh, to make it a little faster, I'm just going to grab everyone and move everyone up back up to the predator room. Okay. That way, you don't have to Sounds move all the way back. <laughs> Sounds good. There we go. All right. Yes, I would like to go on into the room. Uh, show my ticket. I have my ticket out in my hand. I kind of look at my friends. Yep. Uh, not pretending I'm not looking at my friends, except for Stink. Uh, Stinkfoot and. Uh, Get up there. The guard there by the door does ask for your tickets, and then he will open up a door outside with his pass card. And then you will see, uh, you will hear doors, uh, the door on the other short walk through be opened as well from the guards inside as they heard the other one being unlocked and open up access to the gem stone ward. And I walk in. You see Not chairs, several tables cluttered with crystal and silver, ta silver, silver tableware. Against the east wall, light green stone rests atop a marble pedestal. All right, I'm going to ask this guard to uh, introduce myself as a, a student of all things arcane and always looking to learn more. What? What are those things you guys are using to open the door? Those look like some uh, kind of cool magic. Uh, that's um, museum business. Sorry, we can't discuss that. Cool, thanks. And uh, the uh, you do notice that, that uh, when you're talking to them, that the other guard... Uh, seems to be a, a female human, kind of looks over and she uh, nods uh, sternly to that guard and uh, like following the orders of, like they're supposed to. And he kind of uh, straight, straightens up and holds his spear up a little, little taller. Okay. It does seem as if she uh, is in charge of the uh, uh, all of the guards, this guard here. Okay. Giving them a look over, is the card something that is just in their pocket? Are they holding yes. on to it? They do seem to have it attached to their belt, but they do keep it in their pocket. Hmm. Well, 
Well, I'm going to uh, just walk right over and look at the dome. Okay. Uh, since you have uh, had your tickets, you go into the gala area where uh, you do see a few more nobles coming in, sitting down, uh, being served uh, by servers that are coming around with food and such like that. Um, you do notice uh, mm-hmm. as you enter, of course, that the uh, pedestal, there's a pedestal that uh, does contain uh, what appears to be the uh, Merkmire Stone. Uh, as you get a little bit closer, uh, mm-hmm. you can see that the light green is a very light green stone on the pedestal. Um, it does seem to have a few cracks on it here and there, but uh, perhaps maybe from the digging. Um, but uh, it doesn't seem to be doing much uh, just sitting there uh, on the uh, pedestal itself. Um, as you're looking about... Um, are you going to examine the stone on the pedestal? Oh, yes, definitely. And okay. that is this one here, correct? Yes, that is that one there. Okay. Yeah, I'm um, not, yeah, I'm just, just sort of just kind of going by, but I'm giving it a very uh, scrutinizing, scrutinizing eye. I'm looking at every detail about the pedestal, stone itself, everything around it. Uh, yes, indeed. As you get there, you can definitely see that that large chunk of jade that you discovered in the other display uh, is almost definitely the same, about the same weight and size uh, of the uh, uh, Merkmire stone itself. Okay. Um, but you now, such a, uh, being a rogue, you definitely know that this, this, this pedestal is most likely trapped in some way. That's exactly what I was going to look. It's kind of looking around, looking for traps. Uh, give me an investigation. Okay. Oh, nice. Uh, you do notice something, you know, kind of looking about to, around the base, you know, just kind of glancing down every once in a while to not, you know, to kind of be, incon- kind of be inconspicuous, uh, that there seems to be some sort of glyphs carved at the base. Are you, do you happen to be proficient with Arcana? Um, I don't think I am. No, I, well, I just, uh, no, I have one in the Arcana. That would be well. If you're not skilled, that would probably be not something skilled. for your and Stinkfoot to uh, take a look at. Yeah, I'm not. A ritual and stink. Is there anything particular you're doing in the uh, the wing? I'm going um, to walk in and just do a big glance around the room, checking out the gala hall. Is this, in fact, where we saw that skylight? Uh, in this area, uh, give me one moment. Sure. Uh, you do believe that the skylight, you don't see a skylight above this room. It's a 30 foot high ceiling and there's nothing on the ceiling other than the ornate decorations and stuff inside the museum. Uh, but you do believe that the skylight from the drawings that snaps and, uh, stink had made, uh, over on the other building would probably be somewhere above this area. The the gala room? Yes. Okay, so... Like whatever that, that under was on the top, that part of the building would be above this area. Yeah, so in the gala room, looking up, I don't see the skylight. It's not in Correct. here? Okay. Correct. So there's so probably it's... a room above. Okay. Good uh, to know. But with your pass. 15 you do notice yet again on this wall down here by by uh the uh leader of the guards mm-hmm. you do notice that there's a vent as well that seems to connect from the other side an air vent mm. yes i'm gonna move up and look at snaps look at the pedestal look at snaps look at the pedestal I uh, just I kind of walk up and I pretend that I'm pointing at some of the other stones that are on the uh, uh, table there in front of me, kind of not even paying attention, and I, I kind of, you know, speak to him uh, in a whisper, you know, 
about the runes. I tell him that the arcane runes, and then I just okay. say something about the gems that are on the table. Oh yeah. I'm gonna spend my inspiration and make an arcana check. Okay. Ooh. Oh my gosh, a natural twenty. Are you kidding me? Great. Jump, jump <laughs> into my pocket. All right. All right. Um oh, that's good. You do notice Ooh. that the tiny glyphs indicate that if the stone is removed from the pedestal without doing something else or disabling this situation, all of the doors to the room will lock. Uh, basically, if it's removed from the, the pedestal, arcane lock spells will activate on all the doors leading to this room. All the doors leading to this room, like all the way through. Yes, the secret doors. I mean, you can see the arcane writing. The secret doors, the doors uh, through uh, here uh, that you entered in through, the doors down here to the south, and the secret doors over here uh, that Reginald could easily see. The other secret, the concealed door here that most likely leads to another area where cleaning supplies are kept uh, would all be locked. If the stone is removed from the pedestal, All right, so no need to detect magic. Uh, if you wanted to, Redfield and uh, your companion, uh, uh, Snaps, could probably give you enough room to cast a detect magic if you wanted to, but probably definitely not be able to cast it ritually unless you yeah. sit out of one of the tables. Yeah, I think maybe, um, see, this is Noble, and there's three guards. Uh, yeah, there's a few other Nobles uh, around the room as well. I just didn't want to put them in the, in the room there for you. All right, I'll try to position myself as away from everything as I can and pull out my book as if I'm drawing, and I'll, I'll give a cast of Detect Magic. Uh, ritual cast, so uh, you'll have to do it, like, as I mentioned, at the table with your companions, and they can give you advantage on your sleight of hand check. I was just going to give it a not ritual cast. Oh, just cast it normal. Okay. Um, so. Okay. Uh, go ahead and give me a sleight of hand. Anyone want to give them? Yeah, give. Uh, no, okay. If I have to sleight of hand anyways, then I will. I will get my party together at a table. Okay. And I will do the yeah, sleight of hand. Magic without them noticing that you're casting it. Yes, definitely. Gotcha, gotcha. And I'll get advantage because they're going to sit with me Ooh. and help me. Yeah, sure. Trying to block the view of any eyes. Sure. Assisting. Oh, boy. Dice be kind. Nice. 19. Very nice. Uh, casting detect magic reveals that there is an aura of transmutation magic around the pedestal, which you can see also is attached to the floor and cannot be moved. Okay. And it's about a half hour into the, uh, uh, towards the end of the gala, about a half hour to the end of the gala. Uh, you see some of the nobles finishing up their meals, you know, and uh, uh, get, passing off writs of, uh, you know, um, paper that could be taken to banks and such like that for donations to the uh, museum, uh, off to uh, uh, all the Arkin. We'll move all the on back up over here in the gallery room as well. And uh, start uh, kind of uh, heading out. Uh, the only place you really haven't examined yet is the privy area. And, of course, you have been at a meal for some time now, for about maybe 20, 30 minutes or so. Might be a good time to go visit those. Stink, stinks, mutters, oh, the sour milk is hitting me hard. And I gesture to the guard, let, let me out, I need the privy. Oh, they, they will allow you to, to exit. So I say to the guard, the privies are out here to the left, right? 
take a right and then another right. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Oof. I will follow suit. Bump into Not that saying guard. anything, just I will say uh, uh, I'm done with this place. Uh, thank you. I must go. And I will walk out and go Wish I had thumb ending up towards the privies. All right. They are in this hall here. What's Reginald doing? I'm going to give a quick glance around the room. Does that did that door I saw earlier seem to come through into this room as well? Over here, yes. Okay. It just kind uh, you of should be make it. The, can you all see the door icons? You can see those right now, correct? Oh, yes. It's a new feature mm -hmm. that rolled added in. Uh, yes. You, sh you should notice that uh, some of them have locks on them, which means they are locked. Uh, okay. But you should be able to click on the door and open it if you want to open the door. They should also have icons that let you know if they're trapped without having to, to search them. That would be nice. yeah. Unfortunately, they don't. <laughs> All right, um, I'm going to check out this one. But yeah, yeah I the just privy? make it look like I'm looking at the guard as I'm looking for that secret door, nod to the guard, and make my way out oh, of the room. Uh, the uh, area in the privies holds five stalls. A simple latch allows the door of each privy to be locked from inside. Uh, you did notice snaps before you went into that one. To the east of the privies is a staircase leading up. Okay. Um, I just kind of take a quick look inside, uh, noticing if there are any vents or any uh, doors. Can I find anything inside of this privy? Nope, just a regular panels. Trash. Okay. All right. Uh, you do know, of course, that they probably do lead all the way down to the sewers. And as I mentioned before, these are 30 foot high ceilings. So that's going to be a lot of sewage to crawl through if you decide to enter in through the privies. <laughs> Reginald, it's me. What else do you want to do here? Uh, uh... Are we finding somewhere to hide? Are we trying to break back in? Um, Anything else you want to check out before we leave? There is a stairwell right near Snaps that leads up, and you That's also it. haven't really... You could access the basement through those extra those uh, delivery doors down there. Just depends. It probably might I'd not... Say we be a bad idea to try and grab one of those cards. Maybe check out upstairs. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm going to go ahead and look upstairs real quick. I'm just going to walk up there. Like I'm thinking it's a privy, you know. It's like, oh, okay. I'm just going to take a peek family around the corner up the stairs. It's the family right, restaurant. You, steps. you should see yourself up here. Okay. I'm going to stay back. I do see. Kind of guard the area. Good call, everyone. Good call. Uh, the winding staircase leads up to this cramped space filled with haphazardly stacked boxes. Starlight pours into the space through the large skylight above you. Okay. Uh, looking really quickly, trying not to waste too much time. Uh, the skylight, are there any panels, um, latches, anything that would signify I could open that skylight if I could reach uh, it? You notice that it is locked. Uh, you definitely believe if you had your thieves tools, might be a little difficult, um, but you could probably uh, unlock it because uh, it does lock from the inside. Oh, okay. So I could un potentially unlock it from where I am and go out. Okay. All right. Um, anything else of note inside of the room? Uh, uh, most of the supplies are for events. There's like lecterns, linens, tableware, stuff like that uh, throughout the room. Okay. Um, and I'll go back downstairs and I will get to the hall and I will report what I see. I tell them about the skylight and just a bunch of other boxes and uh, let them know that that's uh, where the skylight is up there. And it is, uh, have a lat and tell them, it's, you know, you can open it from the inside. Do we think that might be a good place to hide while they close down? I, 
I was thinking it could be, but I wasn't sure if uh, that was the plan. I wanted to let you guys know if we were gonna, if we're gonna all try to hide it up in here. Then uh, there we go. We could do that, but what's the vote? I don't think they're gonna. We're gonna be able to hide in these privies for very long. They'll probably look in there. So. What I've what I've seen quickly is there seems to be some kind of compartment up on the ceiling above the main entrance. There are secret hidden doors between some of the exhibits. There is a guard who is paying off a debt to the museum. They broke something and they're only here as long as they owe money. And there seems to be air vents going into the room with the gem. I could get up to the air vents, but I don't know if I could pull them open. And there is the uh, possibility of alarms, too. So um, so what are we going to do? We're going to try to... Let's hide. Let's hide. Let's hide in here. You say, try to hide in the attic? Or a bunch of boxes. Possibly could uh, hide inside of one or two. You know, we're pretty small. I want to give you one more bit of information as well. Okay. Sure. Well, let me gather your tokens all together here real quick. Mm hmm. Uh, this is what it looks like on the outside of the basement from earlier. They're all up here. Yep. Okay. There was that huge uh, door there. Uh, oh. Okay. So if we go back out, we could get back in through the basement, possibly. And you and... do notice, uh, Reginald, that there is a door over here. And there's a door right there we could probably use. I'll stand over here and look out if someone wants to try it. I'll try it. I'll first look for traps, of course. Okay, give me an investigation check or perception, your choice. <laughs> That'll do. Traps. Okay. I'll look, listen, and feel, and I'll open the door. Unless I find something out of the way, poke my head inside. Look, what is in there? You do notice that there is a secret door on this side, and there is a set of uh, what appears to be a uh, ladder leading down to a 50-foot-long tunnel that heads uh, north. This is outside at the basement level. Yes. But then it okay. leads down to a tunnel, about 10 feet down to a tunnel. That leads 50, from looking down there with your superior dark vision, leads about 50 feet north and has another ladder. It's in this direction. Okay, yeah. Well, Do you follow you the tunnel? I, uh, I tell them what, we've, what, what it is, and I, uh, mm -hmm. I say, let's go for it. What do you think? We all so we've, we've left the museum. We're outside around back right now? Yeah. Okay. Gala was over. In that case, it's it uh, coming to a close. Yes, it is coming to a close. <laughs> Ditch the gala closed. Put him in the purse. The the second we <laughs> are out of the building and around the corner, I am out of those that gala attire so fast. Gotcha. Gotcha. 
put on your uh, all your adventure gear and such like that. Uh, but I can give you some information real quick that following that 50 uh, foot long tunnel does lead to a cosp a copse of trees near the museum. Hmm. Interesting. And that is where we're going to leave off our adventure for this evening. So you've scouted everything. Ooh. You've found out some information. Uh, so the next uh, time we play next Sunday, we will play part two of this, where you will go ahead and start planning out your heist a little bit, and then we will uh, execute and see what happens. Uh, now that the museum is closed, uh, you have some information. You do know that... Uh, the doctor, uh, Daniel, Daniel had said that the egg is supposed to hatch around midnight. So you have about four hours after the museum closed at eight to plan and get inside and execute your plan. So you have multiple ways to enter in. You can try to enter in the skylights. Uh, you can try to enter in, and and I don't have a problem if, uh, Donnie, if you wanted to make a thief tools check, your your companion Reginald could easily uh, went up there and got your thief tools to try to unlock the light uh, to mm -hmm. give you an option there as well. Um, okay. You could always, you know, come in through the secret uh, entrance down here in the bottom of the basement as well. Okay, so that will give you all something to think about before next week, uh, and we will go ahead and pick up next uh, next week's session, uh, part two of the. Uh, um, the Merkmeyer Malevolence, and uh, we will go from there, do a little planning at the beginning, and then uh, go ahead and see what hijinks we can get into trying to get inside the museum to steal uh, the stone. We leveled up, right? Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> no. After next session, you will level up. Uh, ah. but no leveling up tonight. <laughs> Uh, we did not find any uh, inform or any uh, uh, anything of value uh, tonight, um, but uh, we'll see what happens during your exploration of the uh, uh, museum when there's nothing but guards left in there. And there's no uh, uh, nobles or uh, anything of that nature. All right, so uh, we do have coming up for those of you still watching. We do have a few uh, other streams uh, up on our schedule below. If you go down below in the about section, click on our schedule. Our next stream will be on Tuesday evening at six p.m., uh, which will be uh, Dungeons and Deliberations. Uh, me talking about uh, different things of my experiences as, as a DM. If anyone wants to come in and uh, prepare some questions ahead of time and ask me those, we can talk about my experience as, as a dungeon master in my forty years. You can ask me advice about being a DM. Uh, things along those lines. And then on Wednesday, uh, there's normally our talk show, which is uh, Tavern Talks around the, uh, the Tavern Talks of the Shifty Boar. Uh, but for the first couple of them, we're going to be introducing you to all of our members of our uh, collective. So this Wednesday, we'll be having a sit down for about an hour with Otter. And then the following Wednesday, we'll have a sit down with Dante Shen. Uh, the following Wednesday, uh, which is the, I believe, uh, the first Wednesday in March, uh, we will be uh, moving that from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, and then we'll have our normal talk show uh, the following week after that from 7 to 9. As we did finish our homebrew campaign uh, that uh, Dante Shin and I were playing, uh, we did finish that last Wednesday. So we will be moving after this week, be moving the uh, Wednesday night show to 7 p.m. And then of course, on Thursday and Friday from 1 to 3, I'll be uh, playing uh, some Baldur's Gate. Uh, the Enhanced Edition on uh, Thursdays for a couple of hours, just some turn-based stuff to be able to chat with viewers and things along uh, things of that nature while we're playing. And then, of course, on uh, Friday from 1 to 3 p.m. Eastern, we'll be playing Lord of the Rings online. Uh, I think, for those of you that might have uh, checked in with the last uh, uh, stream of that, we're probably going to go ahead and switch over to one of my higher-level characters, uh, because he has the ability to travel all over the place and you won't have to sit and watch me ride a horse from uh, the desire to breathe. <laughs> uh, but uh, we, we, we should, uh, we're, we're finalizing the uh, applications for uh, any of our community members uh, that wish to uh, apply to join us on our live play stream. Uh, those are, that should be going up in the next day or so. We're going to post it up first on our 
uh, private uh, D&D server uh, to give a lot of our uh, community, which have over 200 members on there since we started, uh, since I started the Master of Dungeons brand, to, to give them a, a first shot at it. And then we're going to open it up uh, to our community server and put it up onto our website uh, for those that want to uh, apply to come and join in these different heists with us uh, with your Adventures League character. Uh, and I think that is all of my announcements. Does anyone else have anything to talk about? Stay tuned for the raid. Oh, yes, we are going to raid. Uh, give me a moment here. I'm going to check out some of uh, the people that were following for D&D. &D. And uh, raid, oh, yes, I do have a raid target for us. Uh, she is wonderful. Um, I love her to death. Uh, it is Darling Creep Show. Uh, she also does a lot of miniature painting uh, online as well. So I think we'll, we'll just go over there. Uh, what's that command again, uh, Otter? I'm going to put is that in. Uh, backslash raid, and then a gotcha. space, and then the name of the channel. Backslash raid. Looks like they're doing some salt marsh. Yeah, so when you jump over there, please make sure uh, to give her a follow. Uh, and of course, if you want to sub to our channel or her channel, uh, feel free to do so as well. I'm just gonna make sure I've got that proper. There we go. And we're gonna go ahead and raid Darling Creep Show. We'll see everyone over there in a few. Oops, was that forward slash or backslash? Backslash. If you did it right, you'll have a little pop up that says raiding uh, now. See, again, we're all learning, uh, as we go. <laughs> That's okay. That's what I'm here for. Exactly. Thank you to everyone in chat for hanging out with us. It's good to see you chatting in there, having a good time. I think I'm spelling your channel correctly. There yep, it is. There we go. Perfect. All right. Thanks, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.